Hey everyone, you're listening to the official podcast of 4PlayerNetwork.com. Check us out at that address for everything you need to know about our community, monthly giveaways, and nightly live streams. You can even support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash 4player. And last but not least, you can catch the live recordings of these podcasts every single Thursday night on our Twitch channel. We hope to see you there. Enjoy. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. This is episode 622 of Four Player Podcast. My name is Nick Henderson. I am joined to my right by Brad Simons. Yo. Nolan Hedstrom. What up? Crispy. Hello. Hello. So do we decide, is it ASMR or AMSR? It's it's ASMR. ASMR. All right, I'm never, I'm, I'm never going to remember that. And also joining us on the fifth mic is, of course, Christopher Davis. Hello, hello. Our lovely video feature producer. And we have... So much to talk about tonight, but before we do that, before we get into all the video games, before we talk about Star Wars and Death Stranding and all that cool shit, I would like to take an opportunity to let everybody know about Project M, which is coming up in December, on December 14th, 2019. Um, We mentioned it a few weeks back, and uh, we hit a goal on Patreon. We got 150 patrons, so we're going to be doing our next Project M event. If you're not familiar, we do a race through it. We pick a game and we we sit together in the same room and we race through it on the stream. We race to see who's second. We race to see uh, who loses to Nolan uh, first. Um, and we we have some we finally have some details to share with you. If you're watching us live, there's actually a post live on on the website at fourplayernetwork.com now that you can go check out. But we will be racing through. Are we ready for it? Drum drum roll, maybe. Wait, they don't know? No, we haven't said. I mean, oh, but we've kind of talked, ah, we talked about it. We talked it out a little bit on the show. Make something up. Make something up. Make, make, days gone. Oh, We're doing days gone. We're racing days gone. <laughs> oh, my hey. God. That would be so nice. Okay, no. <laughs> We're not racing through days gone. We'd we are, be like, wait, where's all the viewers? <laughs> <laughs> days, days gone. gone. Days gone. Days gone. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, we will be racing through classic. Gex 3. <laughs> Resident Evil 4. No! Uh, so, yeah, so. December 14th, 2019, we will be doing a, a, a race on the stream through Resident Evil 4, hopefully from start to finish. But here's the deal. One, one just like last time when we did our Super Mario 64 project, and we are going to be raising money for a charity. We're not, we have not 100% agreed on what that charity is going to be. We have a few ideas, so we will make that announcement at a future date, maybe next week. Um, <laughs> I think, I'm not going to say specifically, but we're debating between children and doggos. <laughs> yeah, <basically. laughs> Which one's more important? Yeah. Do we want to donate money to children, human children, or animal children? I guess that. <laughs> That is, we're not necessarily children. Animals of all ages. Well, I mean, every living creature is a child of something. We're, we're kind of going back and forth. The point is, we're going to raise some money on the stream while we do this event. All the proceeds will go to a charity of our choosing. We will make that announcement very, very soon when we have finally figured it out. But here's the other deal. We're going to introduce some new rules. Because typically, it's just been kind of like, sit down together, race through a game, and get to the very, whoever gets to the end first wins the race, right? Um, you know, gets the bragging rights or whatever. Um, this This time... While getting to the end certainly is important, uh, we're going to introduce a simple, keyword simple, point system. Mm. That So people can accrue points by doing extra things. They can maybe lose points in certain ways. We haven't, we haven't ironed out all of those details yet. We will, of course, make that uh, known to everybody once we've, we've figured it out. Um, but, and I, you know, I think Crispy had, I'm going to go ahead and share that because I think Crispy had a wonderful idea. Because we're sitting here talking about logistics, how this thing is going to work, and how, and how, Chris Davis is going to have to like kind of cuz he he very he not only does he switch between our our camera views and and talks to chat and everything but he's also going to be keeping track of our points, right? So we're like how do we, how do we make sure what's going on, guys? Nothing. No, how do we on. make sure that Chris Davis knows when we've done something worthy of points? Well, we're all going to have we're all going to have props, right? That we can throw at Chris Davis. No. We're going to chuck at his head. No. Okay, we're not going to do that. But the point is it's going to be it's going to be delightful. It's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, I think we're planning on starting at 9 a.m. on December 14th. What, That's Saturday. While we're playing RE4, can we have the song going in the background? Which one? The, uh, My Date with the President's Daughter. <laughs> My Date with the President's Daughter. Crispy yeah. knows it. You know, if we My just, Date with the President's Daughter. If, so we just looped, if we just looped that. Instead yeah. of actually having our direct audio from any of the games, we wouldn't have to figure out all of the 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 incredibly complicated like. I'm I'm gonna guess I'm gonna guess screen. four people in chat 
are familiar with that movie. Yeah, I is have it no- on Disney Plus? Maybe Skyliner knows it. Wasn't that a Will Friedle movie? I believe so. It was. It was a Disney movie. Who was the president's daughter? I do not remember. Was she know. equipped with ballistics or what? What's the line <laughs> from Resident Evil Four? I don't remember. Weapons of mass there's some zingers street. in there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, anyways, if you want to know more about the event, we will. Uh, you can first of all, you can check out the post, which I like I said is live now on fourplayernetwork.com. We will update that post and of course let everybody know through all the usual channels like Twitter and Discord and this podcast, of course, uh, in the coming weeks as we hammer those specifics out. That was the president's daughter. Oh damn! Um, <laughs> but anyways, now that we got that out of the way, I, I did not know she was equipped with ballistics. What what is the line from the? It's something like I mean, that. Damn it! Sounds right. Looks, okay. Well, oh, I'll looks look like she has ballistics too. Is that what <laughs> I'll look it up. Some offensive shit. <laughs> Go, God. But anyways, it's going to be a lot of fun. We hope you guys can join us. At the very least, you can mark your calendars now. It's a Saturday. Everybody should be free. It'll be a lot of fun. Come enjoy the festivities, uh, uh, the the shenanigans. Help us maybe help us raise a little bit of money that we can, so we can help some some like I said animals or children out. Either one. We're not younglings. Entirely, younglings. We'll call them younglings. Yeah, younglings. I see the president has equipped his daughter with ballistics. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Is that the direct? Yeah, that's, quote? Yeah. that's the line. That's kind of. It adds a whole. That lot, and that's an old. Oh. She's got big tits. It's a <laughs> yes. It I mean, a, I guess, right? I mean, not really. To All mind. I remember is that she ducks when you point the gun over her. In front um, of, yeah. yeah. What? What does that have to do with anything? It adds a whole another level of creepiness when he says the president equipped his daughter. That's true. Yeah. With ballistics, with government it? funds. Like, yeah. Like he paid for fake ballistics. That's yeah. weird. <laughs> Anyways, this you know this is all too real. <laughs> this is all way too real. Why don't we start the show off with some feedback from last week? That'll help us get the uh, our creative juices flowing before we jump into our conversations that we're about to have. You well, ready? My juices have been flowing flowing for a while, Nick. Necrotechno says, "I also saw Doctor Sleep. Anyone see that since last week? No, nope. <laughs> you sons of bitches." I also saw Doctor Sleep, and I quite enjoyed it as well. It's a shame that it isn't doing well in the box office. I think one problem that it suffers with is that the source material is a sequel to the Shining novel, and the movie is dicto- uh, dictate. Oh my god, dictator! This is dictatorial. Not- Maybe is that the word? Uh, I think I think the I think what he's trying to say is directorially. Mm-hmm. Is that a word? Yes. Yes, is directorially a sequel to the Shining movie. Yes, He's sure. Wrong word. Uh, well, well, they're emulating Kubrick's style, I think, with this movie. Yes, and following that up that story. But even the, though Doctor Sleep is a sequel to the book, which was very different than Kubrick's. But Shining. it's also very weird too, because while it's it's a direct sequel to the book, like a lot of like even when they go back and they try and crack like feature characters and stuff from mm. the original they find people that look very similar mm. to the original so uh yeah. to, or to Kubrick, kubrick's movie mm. um but he says uh it obviously draws cinematic cinema cinema oh my god he's using the wrong words cinematic maybe you're reading the cinematography wrong word. <laughs> cinematographic is that is that a word I mean, that's anything's exactly a word. the word. That's this has exactly. been a very clunky he, feedback. He set. uses <laughs> onomatopoeia in his movie. Uh, he's drawing influence from Kubrick's work, even though the Doctor Sleep novel is only tangent. Tangent. God damn it! Tangential. It three. T- Tangential is a word. Tang- oh my god, we get it. You're smart. <laughs> You Dude, he has the biggest sep- thesaurus I have ever seen. His thesaurus is so fucking big. Tangentially right. co- connected to the original film, it makes some independent scenes which in isolation are fun homages to Kubrick's work seem a little out of place. Did you ever opinion. do that in college when you're like writing like a like an essay that, or something and you would just right click and look sy- synonym, right click synonym. What's a bigger word I can use for this? All the time. And oh, yes, that last word, that. that last yeah. word was actually a word. Well, I mean, you couldn't do that on a typewriter. Threw me for a loop. Anyways, moving on. Yes, I still I still fully encourage everybody to go check out Doctor Sleep. I think it's a pretty good movie. Anyways, Slop Dog says, while it's not at all surprising to hear Kojima Productions is getting in, into movies, uh, it's exciting nevertheless. It will be interesting to see how Kojima works with the creative aspects of film. Maybe he'll feel the medium is too restrictive, considering his signature scatterbrain style, or maybe he'll learn new ways to express his ideas in a more streamlined fashion on screen. Whatever he puts out, I just hope it's weird. Oh, it'll be weird. Oh, it'll be weird. Plenty of weirdness. Um, he says. I th- he goes on to say. I think the closest movie di- director equivalents to Hideo Kojima are either. Just out of curiosity, before I read this, because mm-hmm. I want to. I want to see if Crispy 
because last week we were talking about Kojima and we're trying to figure out who his like closest equivalent is actually mm. in Hollywood. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's weird. The f- who's the film auteur that's know. most close to Den- Denise Villeneuve? De- Denis, uh, but I don't think he's like he's too. He- I don't no. feel like he's as heavy handed. No, I'm just no. trying to guess. Denis an artist. Yeah. Um, no. Oh, whoa, you're saying oh, Kojima is not? Damn. Dude, he listens to this podcast. He's gonna a, hear you say ooh, that. Boyd Cooper in chat says David Lynch. David like Lynch. That might be a good one. Didn't we mention that last week? <laughs> Maybe like Lost Highway, David Lynch, but I, not like good David Lynch. Ooh. Yeah. What about Damon Not Lindelof? Like David Lynch when he's like lynching. I don't know. I mean, I could see Guillermo del Toro because they both like a lot of the same things, and Guillermo can be hit or miss. Yeah. I'll say it. All right. Um, I don't fucking know, man. I, I like my. Uh, I don't, like, he's as much Michael Bay as anything. <laughs> What? There it is. Wow. Slop Dog says, yeah, I think the Michael closest movie Bay. director equivalents to Hideo Kojima are either Quentin Tarantino or Michael Bay. Oh. That's weird. Terrence Malick. Uh, both are auteurs in their own right with their own unique styles, which also, uh, while also being weirdly indulgent at times. He's definitely Especially a, with female characters. Francois Truffaut. Uh, also, Kojima's goal on getting people to work together with Death Stranding is damn wholesome. I do agree. Um, Wait, getting people to work together? Yeah, like the whole concept of being like uh, the strand stuff yeah like just mm. working together to accomplish things through mm. connection is yes it, and no it's a wholesome concept well, let's let's talk about it we will we, will hey, talk we should do a podcast and we'll talk about it we'll talk more about death stranding a little bit uh equack says uh thank you nick for keeping the co- keeping kotor 2 in the poll for the Re- revival club damn it that game won. is remarkable also thanks for standing up for blade runner 2049 best site best best sci-fi movie of the millennium okay, standing up wow. yeah he didn't need to stand up for it we were just no one. We were just mad at no, him no. for not having yeah, seen it. Yeah, because Chris Davis hadn't seen it, and he was. But like, he made like some really silly comparison. I'm trying to remember. Oh, what did he oh, say? Oh, it was really. He silly. said like the new Terminator movie is like the Blade Runner 2040. Yeah. What? <laughs> right? We all laughed. Who said that? But he had not seen the new Blade Runner, so I like how we're all talking about. Yeah. Chris Davis. Nick like, said that. No, no, Chris Davis said oh. that. And we then he laughed and laughed and laughed. And then he said, and then and then he said, but I've only seen the original like two years ago. Uh, Which we were like, well, what what does that? Have I did end to up naming that? the show the Thirty Years Later show. <laughs> I'm well aware of that. I know, and I still stand by what I said. I really enjoyed Dark. Twenty twenty eight years. He's gonna watch the new Blade Runner. That's mm, what? No, that's fine that you enjoyed Dark Fate, but that like. <laughs> the connect, the connection, the, connection uh, the that French this is connection. One of those Tully. Thirty years later, soft reboots. T- Tully's the new uh, lady in Dark Fate. I don't right. know what that means. The yeah. the new uh, badass. She's like a she's like a hybrid or a. Yeah. Oh, Tully. Oh, I yeah. gotcha. T- I gotcha. Tully is the badass Wait, in the new T- Terminator. Who's Tully? She's from the, the movie the, the, Tully. Yeah, she, the main the the new Terminator, whatever the girl. She was in a movie called Tully. Yeah. with um, what's her face. Uh, Charlize Theron, yeah, and she's Charlize really Theron. good. Charlize Theron, yeah, she is very good. She's, she's been really in a couple other things. Tell. I do like her. Yeah, she's a good yeah. actress. Yeah. Yeah. She's really. She good was in. Uh, she was in an episode of Black Mirror. Yeah. The, oh, the, she was in like a really good San episode Bernardino. Of Black... Yeah, not San Bernardino. I know it's not San Bernardino. Uh, it's San Junipero. Uh, yeah, San Junipero. 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 Yeah. Did you see that one, Nick? Yeah, that's a good one. That Black Mirror. San I've Junipero? only I've only watched like three episodes. of What? That seems like it's like right up your butt. It's a really good episode. I got to an episode of Black Mirror that was too awkward to finish watching. Which one? Uh, the one where they record stuff with their eyes and, oh, they look at and they're having yeah. a dinner party. I couldn't finish that watching That one is it. awkward. The good thing about Black Mirror is... They're not connected. Yeah. So you, yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're so different. so lightly connected. If you skip an episode, it's not going to matter. Somehow, it still like stopped me in my tracks. I, I, I would like to go back and finish it. But anyways. Um, Do you guys ever wonder like what happened to Nick? Henderson? Me? Yeah. Yeah, all the time. Like, what happened to him that, like, socially awkward situations are, like, the biggest fear he has? I feel like it's just got... I feel like He would rather die than, like, watch two people be in an awkward interaction. I'm gonna be honest. So, I've been watching watching a lot of The Office, which I've seen plenty of episodes of The Office. the British Office. But I've been watching it with... How many uh, times did you watch uh, Mike's Tots? Oh, Scott's Tots? Scott's Tots, yeah. Scott's Tots. Oh, dude. I've seen that episode literally... It's not even that awkward. Hold on. It's just fun. Funny. I've seen it one time. I will never watch that episode. You guys again. are crazy. That episode is fucking hilarious. 
No, <laughs> dude, don't get me wrong. That show is epic and hilarious in the best ways, but like, I can't handle more than like one episode at a dude, time. Dude, honestly, too... the dinner party, Karth, the dinner party is a great episode. Scott's tots is fucking miserable. He ruined those child's lives. We should, we should like clockwork oh. orange Nick and oh, make no. him watch some like mm. high school talent shows yeah. or something. <laughs> give him, last night, give last, him the Ludovico treat. Last night we watched the episode, the uh, the Christmas party episode where where. Uh, Michael breaks Carol breaks up with Michael and they go to the Benihana and then he he, oh my god wait Nick the waitresses and then you can't remember which one is which wait he marks her arm Nick you realize (laughs) that the two women at the restaurant are not the two women at the office yes they are different women (laughs) okay Okay, I was thinking that, but I didn't want to bring it up. The I first time I watched it, we I didn't to, notice. We that. need to shut this conversation. Yeah, we yeah. Are. We this doing? is horrible. I what was, are we doing? I was really worried that if I said anything, I would like. Am I, am I being racist right now? I don't know. All right, uh, next comment. Let's yeah, move on. What's next? That how did the com- how did we even get there? Oh yeah, that yeah, comment. Okay. Mister Scorpion says, "Hearing that Kojima wants to move into film is an interesting prospect. <laughs> I'd watch a film of his, though I'm not sure I'd process it fully until a third or fourth viewing. Also, I'm glad that Brad brought." up the pokemon fan base in his four player minute wait you have something you want to say crispy no i'm just i'm saying you're giving him a lot of credit (laughs) (laughs) yeah that could it could crash and burn who the fuck knows um he's like you're telling me i have to tell an entire story in like two hours in two hours how is that even possible yeah i don't think that like kojima's writing is like super deep and complex and metaphorical i think there's just a lot of bullshit to wade through it's just like 90 hours of cutscenes. It's just like too many characters and details to keep. It's not like it's not like a thematically deep thing. It's not like something that requires meditation. It's just like, wait, what was that guy's name? <laughs> like, very true. Uh, I I still think, and we brought have it up you, last have you played week. Played Death Stranding yet? Just out of curiosity. No, he, he is not. I I still think, and I brought it up I last week. Know. I think that I we. Know. I know. I know. You don't know. I follow. I, I follow. You don't you, know. I follow. I follow every trophy you've unlocked on PlayStation. You don't Christmas. know. I, I still think that your people are judging Kojima on his video games, whereas movies are a completely different medium. And there's no way he could create a script for a movie that was anything like a video game and have anyone no. be like, "All right, I'll make this." I mean, but I also see the movies that he like raves about. Mm-hmm. True, so they're pretty okay. Like, <laughs> like what? Uh, um, he said that Pacific Rim was going to change the way movies were made. I thought Pacific Rim was pretty good. It's a fine movie. But did he it said cha- it was going to change the way movies are written Are and you shot. sure that wasn't lost in translation? It's what he wrote on his Twitter account. Well, did, did you uh, did, did you anyone watch the Tim Rogers Kotaku review of Death Stranding? No, he was a big he, he fan talked of, the shape a lot of water. He talked a lot of this picture. Okay, he, okay, sure. he also is like butt buddies with Guillermo del Toro, so you can't trust anything he says. Um, I'm pretty sure they're butt buddies. Tim Rogers said that he he was talking about all the times like he met Kojima, and one time he just struck up a conversation about like what books he was reading, and he was he had just read uh, what's the Dan Brown book that was really successful, the Da Vinci Code. The Da Vinci, uh, Vinci Code. Code. He was like super into it, or it was like the sequel to the Da Vinci Code. Oh, Do, Angels and Angels Demons? and Demons. Yeah, maybe. Do y'all maybe, remember maybe when not. we were at E3? And Wait, what's wrong with Angels and Demons? A lot. Uh, do you remember when he, we were at E3 and Kojima was there? Yeah. And I was like, oh, shit, hey, Hideo Kojima. And his security guard was like, Ugh! Oh, He just, yeah. like, fucking elbowed yeah. me. Yeah, like, he was like, get out of here. <laughs> Holy shit. That was yeah, loud. Dude, that, 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 however loud it was in your ears, that's how it was in my chest when his security guard was like, body check. <laughs> Dude, those guys were ready to pace some nerds. They <laughs> right? couldn't wait. They're like, here I, comes one. I, I, I wasn't, like, trying to jump him. I was just like, hey, Kojima. You know what I'm thinking? I'm just realizing... That was also the time we were watching the Conan, Conan? O'Brien was yeah. doing that live recording, and yeah. I was like, "Is that where they made a connection?" This Maybe is, this is yeah. Kojima is like a lightweight compared to yet yet to the Shin yet like Yusuzuki. four four hours later. I saw Neil Druckmann, and he's just riding on an escalator by himself, and I was like, "Hey, Neil Druckmann." He was like, "Hey, <laughs> have y'all seen no hey, Nolan? <laughs> have y'all seen reviews? Visit a Shinmu Three message where it's the funniest shit is happening right now because this game came out today and there's reviews coming out and one of the big complaints is like they barely like go anywhere with the story really and like this dude's like no I got to tell my story over thirteen games and it's like he finally gets the chance to like bring back Shinmu and like this miracle project oh. and and he barely inches the story fo- forward That's and. Nice. 
And all the fans are like, that's how it should be. Uh, we don't want a rushed <laughs> ending. We we would rather him him uh never finish the story than to rush the ending and, and ruin the, the first two games. What's that? Oh my god, it's great. All it's, right. Yeah. Any that's, more feedback thing? Yes. Oh uh, shit. <laughs> I'm gonna move on to that. Okay, last one. Uh the drunken merchant <clears throat> merchant says People are totally blowing the whole Pokemon thing out of proportion. However, there are others like me that feel there has been so much untapped potential for several generations now, and where other series like Zelda have redefined themselves and blown me out of the water, Pokemon has stayed exactly the same. Dude, under- you're preaching to the choir, man. I understand both sides of the argument, and I'm not salty at all, but it is always sad to walk away from a series you once loved. <laughs> did, y- did y'all see that one treat uh, from Hard Drive? Wait, what? Uh, from Hard Drive, the Twitter account? No. It was fans protest the new Madden game after EA reveals it won't feature every player since the beginning of the NFL. Oh, <laughs> my. <laughs> Which is the same thing as people getting mad about Pokemon. That is true. Wait, yeah, all 10,000 Pokemon are going to be in the game? Isn't Pokemon what? doing really well? I don't like, know. Yeah, no, yeah, like, it's, it's funny. Good, yeah. It's fun. Like, I saw, I think it was Patrick Fletcher tweeted, and he was like, yeah, because he, he, he retweeted, there was a news article about how Pokemon was, like, the best, second best-selling game of the month or something like that, and, like, how it's, like, blowing up, and he's like, yeah, take that, Pokemon, because, like, everyone was just like, boycott it, fuck yeah. this shit, and it's like, ah, eh, clearly, and didn't have the effect you were hoping for. Um, anyways, guys, thank you so much for the feedback from last week, we appreciate it. If there's anything you want to contribute after tonight's discussions, please feel free to drop us a comment at fourplayernetwork.com on the post for this episode, and we'll read it at the start of our next podcast. But without further ado, let's talk about video games. Yeah. Um, why don't we start <clears throat> with Star Wars? Nick, I have a question for you. Yes. What the fuck is that? What? What are we talking that about? That thing. That looks like, like, like Gor- Guado? What was that guy from Dragon Ball Z? Oh, Go- the dude behind him. Okay. Yeah, what the fuck is that? Uh, I mean, it's an alien from Star Wars, bro. What the fuck is that? I mean, maybe that picture's not doing him any favors. It looks he like looks- he has, like, some fucking giant-ass fucking <laughs> grapefruits in his che- or cheeks or something. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? He store his nuts uh, up there. G- have you ever Goldo. seen a Star Wars? <laughs> I've never seen oh a single God. Star Wars. Uh, well, one one of my favorite, uh, most recent uh, hard drive magazine uh, tweets headlines or whatever. It Why t- was, I don't know. Was man uses last ch- cheat code to set game genie free. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Oh man! Uh, All right. Well, so hold on, day. Nick. Are you the only one that's been playing this? No. Uh, no been Chris Beats been playing it, and Brad apparently. And Brad. Been okay. <laughs> so just me. That's not. Been oh playing great! It. There's a double sided lightsaber. Thanks for spoiling. Yeah. You know God, what's you fucked never up even about, think that? about us? Everybody was like, "Go to Dathomir first. Get the double bladed lightsaber. It's awesome." And I did that because I want to have it uh-huh. because it's in the game. But you don't use but it. But I hate double bladed lightsabers, and I never use it. Yeah, I'm not a big fan. I mean, also, I think it does... I heard it's good for crowd control. It's it good is. for crowd control, but it does less damage than the single-bladed lightsaber. Why? Uh, I, dude, I Just because. No, why? I don't know. Just What's the know. logic? Let's back... Let's <laughs> Wait, hold on, hold on. So you have a laser sword... That now has a laser coming out of you. each no, side. No, no, no. I can answer you, right? Okay, what's up, I Brad? mean, it's purely because a game design thing. What's the, what's thing the Ky- Kylian crystal? What is the thing, Crispy? Kyber. It's your Kyber? stance. The you're, you're, not, you're not swinging it as fast and hard when you're using, um, you know, you're just flipping it around you know, as opposed to using two hands. And, mm-hmm. and, and from like a real world mechanical perspective, it also makes sense because one of the worst things about a game like, say, KOTOR uh-huh. is that it runs off. It runs off like an RPG system whereby every lightsaber blade does the exact same amount of damage. So mm-hmm. using two lightsabers gives you two attacks. Mm-hmm. So there's no reason to ever just use a single lightsaber gotcha. in that game. Uh-huh. You know? So like the yep. idea that like if you had two lightsaber blades, it'd be twice as good as a lightsaber is mm-hmm. fucking dumb. I mm-hmm. From a gameplay perspective. All right. From like a game design. I totally agree, but let's back is it up. Is there dual wielding in this game? Dude, let's back it up for this a second. Let's yeah, bring it back and wield. Double bladed lightsaber. Could you dual wield a double bladed Guys, lightsaber? Everyone's ra- uh, everyone's really rowdy tonight. Let's yeah, bring it back in for a second. What's, what's up, Nick? Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is in fact I didn't even get the title of the game out yet. Is the game we're talking about now, right? This oh. is the new respawn game mm-hmm. um <clears throat> that just released last week. And as we said, all of us except for Nolan have yeah. been, <laughs> have been playing it. Um, and um, I could go any number of directions with this conversation. I, I go in the best direction. Was that true? I 
I guess I can start. Why with... does Chewbacca look like he's made out of plastic? Let me start with a statement. Okay. <clears throat> I said this last night too. I strangely enough, and I did not expect this. I've gone back and forth between loving and hating this game, maybe more than any other game I've played this year. In, Why? In the relatively short amount of time that I've played it, dude. I don't. Need, I, first of all, I feel like this game is made for me. Like as far as like a, it's a start. It's, Honestly, it's what I've been want, it's been asking for for years, right? It's a single player focus Star Wars game yeah. that's all about story and and, and everything and exploration and, ex- and exploration and that's the shit that I love, dude. The exploration in this game is sublime. I love it. Um, and to be it's honest, sublime. I th- I think um, I think like I don't first of all I don't want to come out of the gate swinging with like my complaints because I do actually really enjoy this game. But I think we should talk about it. But yeah, I think we should talk. I mean, I guess I can start by saying I made. Swing, Nick. I feel Swing like I the made the mistake of nice. starting this game um, on hard mm-hmm. or Jedi Master. I think is is the, is the difficulty. Oh man, I did that too. Wait, is the lowest difficult Youngling? No, it's Padawan. 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 Oh, um, it's story. I thought so. I oh, yeah, story. <laughs> it's story night, Master. I don't know. <laughs> Who fucking cares? <laughs> they yeah. look like little dogs. The point is, I started. <laughs> I started on hard um, because everybody talked about this game being uh, like kind of like a Souls like, right? Where mm-hmm. it's it puts a lot of emphasis on uh, uh, parrying and and blocking and, and holding up your defense. And to be honest, that's true. It's it's in that sense, it's great. And the, the difference it is very clear about what the differences are between the difficulty levels when you're selecting it. It actually it shows you. There's a meter that shows you when you go from normal to hard. You can see the uh, the I forgot what the, how they phrase it, but like mm-hmm. the window of time you have to effectively parry goes gotcha. down, right? Okay. So you're like, oh, okay. So I have oh, to be I that al- much. <laughs> I also don't trust those little meters. Yeah, I yeah, mean, it's, I it's hard to, you know, I don't trust them entirely I don't either. Even trust be- incoming damage. I, I don't trust them entirely either because I changed. The, I, I eventually swallowed my pride because it took me a while to like convince myself to do it, and I finally knocked the difficulty down to normal. Thankfully, mm-hmm. you can do that with having to restart, it's and I did not, that, and it doesn't make much of a difference. It's not that different. Yeah. The uh, the combat in this game, while satisfying and oh, and really really cool when it works, I have I feel like I've had so like, you know I talk I played a lot of Souls games. I played I'm playing Sekiro and like. I die a lot in those games. I die, like I die a lot in those games, but I, I rarely feel in those games like like it you know, I'm being cheated. You know what I mean? Like 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 it's I always feel like it's like my fault. I could do something better to prevent that from happening again. And I've died so many times in this game because I feel like there was you know, input lag or because yeah, the, sometimes my attacks just don't come out. Yeah. The, there's like a weird inconsistency to a lot of the thing, mechanics. And, and like like I said, the window to like effectively parry like an incoming attack seems incredibly small. Even for someone who has played a shit ton of souls games, I feel like it is unnecessarily, um, it, unforgiving. It's, uh, you know, I mean, I've had, I've had the same experience in that, I've died a bunch playing this game. Um, I don't think that the parry window is that unforgiving. I just think it's more like what you were talking about with the other thing. Like, the animations just kind of, like, sometimes you get locked into, like, a a string of swings that, like, it just really takes a long time to reset and you're out of position a lot. And the enemies are, like like somehow just, like, much quicker. And and the one thing I have noticed is that, like, it is... And, like, sorry, what? Oh, Why did yeah, you yeah. die there? Dude, yeah, if I don't know. If you're on that thing when it moves, it kills you. What? Uh, it, well, it counts as falling. It's yeah. not. It's not the same thing. as And there's like nothing a death. to tell you that it until counts it happens. It's um, dumb. Sorry. The the thing about like fighting, there's a lot of like melee opponents in this game mm-hmm. because that is kind of where the game challenges you. Like every ranged opponent I've faced so far has been like real easy. Just like yeah. pew, you're dead. Yeah, because you just deflect you know? the life. Um, but the 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 thing about that. The thing about the melee opponents is that, like, it kind of feels like there's one or two ways you really should be approaching them. Because if you're not approaching them that way, they're super fucking hard. Mm -hmm. Like, I can sit there with one of those scout troopers and have, like, a protracted, like, five-minute sword fight with them. And not make, like, a whole lot of of progress. But I do that, like, whole triangle charge slash thing, and it kills them instantly. Hmm. Like, it's really weird. Um, when I started, like, being more conscious about mixing force powers into combat, everything got a lot easier. Why grab Dude, that? I, I'm watching this and I'm, like, screaming. Well, clearly internally. he needs to go back to the beginning and hang a left and I go know. around. I figured that out eventually, but I, okay. was, I like, 
sorry, I'm watching this footage and I'm just like, why did I why did I not start the it footage? It sounds over? like this this game needed a little more time in the oven. Okay, we haven't even gotten to that part well, yet. Hold, so, hold on, I have a question that's kind of more about just Star Wars in general. Mm-hmm. Have we ever seen Wookiees with highlights? Yeah, for sure. Yeah? So was that Chewie? Background Wookiees. No, we, yeah, not Chewie's. Let's stay on stay Can on, we not listen to Nolan? Stay on subject. Stay on stay on, t- on topic here. Um so yeah, I've had a really inconsistent experience with combat because yeah, all too. the problems that that Crispy just described, I, I find to be absolutely correct. I, but the thing is, when you re, when you do end up getting in a in a groove and you're like something works out, or like you're in the middle of a lightsaber battle, but you like stop and like deflect a, a blaster bolt back to a stormtrooper and not and kill him, and then like go back into fighting, like that stuff feels great. Hmm. When you're fighting like monsters, is where I notice a lot of inconsistencies. Uh, I feel like. I'm blocking attacks that aren't red, and I'm still getting hit, and I'm not understanding Wait, hold on. why. Red, what does that mean? Red is like in Sekiro, mm-hmm. you, you know, an unblockable attack. Sure. They flash so you, red. Correct. So you gotta like but back up sometimes faster. I'm blocking, and they're not red, and I take damage, and I'm like, I don't understand what's happening. Hmm. It seems it seems pretty inconsistent. And then there's, on... there's that thing where, like, if you get killed by a monster, it's glowing gold until you hit it once, and then <laughs> yeah. you get all your XP and your health back. But... If that monster's glowing gold, it won't show. It won't show the cues for unblockable attacks. Oh, uh, yeah. because it's already because it's gold, gold instead of red. That's yeah. interesting. Oh, that's fucked that's, up. Maybe that's what it is. it's possible. Um, so yeah, I mean, the thing is, the game borrows. You know, it, it, it. A lot of people compare it to Dark Souls. A lot of people compare it to Metroid, and I definitely see that DNA in yeah. this game for sure. And and those elements, which we'll talk about in a second. I think are excellent. Like I, 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 I kind of like that they did the whole bonfire thing. I have to go back and get your souls, but you don't have to like defeat the enemy. You just kind of have to do a little bit of damage to them, and then you get this really satisfying. Like you see all your health instantly refill. You get all the experience back, and it's like an instant. Like it's kind of like a, a quick rush you get, not, like a dopamine hit, and that like, that stuff's really great. Um, but like I said, the combat's so far has been really consistent, going back and forth between being like really awesome and great, to, and then and then you end up in situations with shit like this, dude, where the platforming just feels fucking jank <laughs> and surprisingly and this is i'm playing on ps4 uh and i know brad you started on ps4 and then you actually switched to pc at yeah because right? it runs like kind of poopy dude I guess, it, on run, base PS4. It, it not only does it run really inconsistently on the ps4 ps4 pro too mind you um hmm. crispy are you playing on ps4 yeah on a, on a base ps4 correct yeah this this looks fine compared to yeah some of the shit i'm dealing with so yeah. So I actually started, and I didn't realize this, I actually ended up watching Digital Foundry's um, video on it mm-hmm. because I was running, because uh, you can go from quality to performance mode, right? And I was sure. like, oh, well, I'm going to go ahead and favor performance, get the higher frame rate. It's broken as fuck. It's just it an does, uncapped frame it, rate. It's an uncapped what? frame rate, which actually leads to really inconsistent frame rate. And then on top of that, you're getting all kinds of weird pop-in. And when I go into my skill tree, when I'm in performance mode, uh-huh. and I click on a video to watch, like, you can learn this ability, and it sure. shows you a quick video of it, it's like hitching like crazy and i can't see what the what the move is hmm. and i turned off performance mode after watching the digital foundry video and everything runs so much better you, you know it's you know it's also a weird issue i've been having huh. like the load times kind of suck dude well and in, in i thought i'd solve that problem when i played it on pc and installed it to an ssd and i'm still having load times that take not only take too long not like obviously as bad as the PS4, but like they're inconsistent. Hmm. Where I would die on the same enemy two times in a row, and one time the load times will be like eight seconds, and then the other time they'll be like like eighteen seconds for the same fucking thing, the same hmm. load. This I'm loading into the same place. I died on the same enemy. I'm like, why is this inconsistent? That's so strange. Uh, so this is one of the situations where I don't use, I don't always watch like Digital Foundry's analysis sure. of games, but like I found the one for this game to be really interesting because they spend like 25 <clears throat> minutes talking about these weird inconsistencies, even on PC, and why those are happening. So it made total sense. And like, what's even crazier is like. Aside from like all the just kind of the technical hitches, like I don't, this game goes has like dramatic highs and lows when it comes to the way just the game looks. Hmm. Like the the opening uh, like level and world and stuff when you first get introduced to the character and stuff, I think I thought it was like, oh my god, this game's gorgeous! I can't wait to play this. And then like I go to the next level or the next planet and I'm like, everything looks kind of like washed out, and like the character models look like they don't have all their textures loaded in. But it's just it's just the way the game looks, mm-hmm. and I don't know. Like, remember when they first showed uh, the first gameplay footage, people were like, why do the Wookiees look like they don't have, like, hair? It just looks yeah. like they're, like, a like made of clay yeah. or something. Do you think EA rushed this game out 
to get it out at the time of the Mandalorian and the, and well, of course. the Skywalker. Right, right after Mandalorian and, starts and right before yeah. uh, episode you know, nine. You yeah. know what's a real shame, though, is this is this is an unreal game. Yeah. And uh, yeah. if everyone is having these kind of issues, I mean, EA's never going to let anybody make a non-Frostbite game from one of their studios again after this. It's but here's we're the thing. We're making this game sound we're, really bad. Yeah, we are starting we really are because okay. this game is fucking amazing. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I, I wouldn't it. know it from what you've said. All right, I sorry. Know. That's why that's why I didn't want to come out of the gate swinging with that. Now that you're all negative. not interested in this game, let's talk about how amazing it is. Yeah, okay. it's also really nice on PC. Let, let me just say, despite everything that we just said, this is a fucking like Metroid Prime like esque game through and through. Like the exploration in, in this game <sighs> is in, in in my opinion, insanely good, and the uh, like the levels themselves are fucking huge. They're crazy. I spent three hours Dude, exploring they... one planet, and I still I I still missed a major ability. Apparently, <laughs> like I was talking to people in Discord, and I was like, "Where'd yeah. you get that?" And they're like, "On that planet." I was like, "I spent that three hours exploring that planet." Holy shit, dude! I did I did this. I did Kashyyyk last night, mm-hmm. and this like I, I was doing like what you're doing here, which is kind of like the main quest line when you get to Kashyyyk. Yeah, it's all about helping the partisans free the Wookies from these imperial uh, slave camps. Yeah, and it took like an hour to do this, and then when I was done, it was like, oh, this is a half of the Kashyyyk map. Yeah. There's a whole bunch of shit that like you just didn't do yet, or that you don't even have like the force abilities in order to one, unlock. One of the things I heard could be a problem is if you kind of go out of your way to explore stuff that you feel like maybe you shouldn't be exploring yet, that might be a little out of your league. That might be a bad idea because a lot of these places you go back to through in the, as part of the main story, and it's sort of expecting you to do that then, which is kind of a sloppy way to do an open open world open wor- planet setting you know what i mean mm-hmm. so that's a little Maybe. frustrating so i'm probably going to stick to the i don't really know what you mean by that but well so like i go out of my way to go to this part of the map that's not related to the main story but to do some of the stuff find some of the secrets but you later on in the story you go back to that planet and you go through that area that you had already secretly explored. Mm. And I heard even some of the things he's saying, he's he's acting like he's never been there. Like, it, it, it seems kind of it's like, like disjointed. respawns it isn't, yeah. never made an open world game, and you can kind of feel it, right? Mm. Um, but, um, yeah. I mean, that may be true. It's kind of, I'm, I, like, I, I'm only like seven or eight hours into the game, so... And like I said, I'm still only on this planet, which is the third planet you go to. Uh, and that first planet that that you go to after the after the game starts, like I didn't spend a ton of time exploring that at all. Um, but it, it it is very much one of those games where you can go back to your ship and then decide, okay, I'm I'm gonna go back to another planet now, revisit it, and and I think that's great. Um, I haven't I I can't attest to what you're talking about and how the story. Uh, kind of there's it's te- like a stepping on its own story's toes so to speak i guess um but i i absolutely love the sense of exploring in this game like mm. the way that metroid prime did it works still works just as well here like they do like the color gating of like doors and, and obstacles and stuff mm-hmm. and then on top of that they throw in some like really interesting like environmental puzzles and stuff throughout the world that like so it's not just about finding a, you know a wall that you can push down with a force or whatever like you go through this area and all of a sudden you're in this room and you have to kind of figure out the, the inner mechanics of like how this one room works there's a really cool puzzle at one point involving wind which i don't want to spoil but like yeah. mm. there's some really creative stuff interesting throughout this game so what do you hate about it <laughs> well, we already talked about what i what i hate about it. i'm glad i got that the out slides of the, way. the slides are kind of dumb the slide uh, you know there's one area that i thought was weird because you go you find like an elevator that takes you up from this lower level to the upper level, right? And instead of being able to get back in the elevator and go back down, there's a, there's just a slide next to the ele- <laughs> next to the elevator, and you have to go down the slide to get back to the bottom. I was what? like, why can't I just get on the elevator and go back down the slide, or go back down to the bottom? It doesn't mm-hmm. make any sense. But I mean, I don't know. I got I, I got nothing. For that, don't for you kind of wish though that like every secret wasn't a new poncho or a new hilt for your lightsaber? I like that. You do? I do. I mean, it's it. I like all the customization options. No, like I'm like I'm like fucking, like I'm fucking like like 
You're fucking. Yeah, I'm fucking. He's I'm fucking. I'm. What's the word? I'm fiending for like ponchos, more ponchos and more outfits. No, and I'm more glad. I'm glad that stuff's in parts. there. Obviously, you need that. Wait, stuff. can you get like but a poncho that like opens up and displays your collection of lightsabers? What are you buying? Damn it! I wish there was more. Well, I was like, referring to uh, upgrade related stuff. I'm not helping you. Damn it! Um, I was referring to don't tell General him. Grievous. Ha 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 ha! I know Star Wars. Strong. I, it would be General nice Kobe. if. They would reward exploration with things that made you stronger, not just cosmetic stuff. Well, here's the thing: like you can't. Uh, the thing is, like the there are abilities that you can find and completely miss. Like okay, I, I didn't watched, know that. I've watched a lot of footage. Like every time I've watched footage of this, le- so I just happened to be playing the level where they first demoed the game, mm-hmm. uh, totally by accident. Um, and in that in that footage, and then I watched some footage that somebody posted on Twitter, and they were in this area, and they were using an ability that I was like, I don't have that yet. Where the-? and I got into Discord, and I was like. Did I miss something? And they were like, yeah, that's on that planet. And I was like, that, I spent three hours exploring that planet. I only left because I thought I had kind of explored everything. Hmm. And apparently not. I didn't go deep enough. There is, an, there is an ability there that I could have had that would have made certain fights maybe a little, function a little bit differently. Like, which I think is... Dude, all right, I mean, right, if you me. used you know? any of your force powers during these fights, they might go a little different. All right, talk to me. What are the good abilities? What use the, the what force, are, Nick. What are the good skills? Use the force. Dude, I do try and use the force, but you run out of force so quickly. And you need to exercise you been, your force more. Have you like, been upgrading that stuff? So, like, these, these like, Jedi hunters that you fight and stuff, first of all, these purple blades, you apparently can't parry. parry. Mm-hmm. You can't parry. They don't really tell you that until you've successfully killed one, and then you get to scan it, and it tells you you can't parry them or whatever, which I, fo- I found to be kind of annoying. But, you like, can? the abilities that I, like, I haven't successfully parried him yet. Like, I've tried fucking so hard, and I, that, this is like fighting this dude. Where Wait, I, when, you, when you go to parry them, have you tried using the get good ability? Oh, my God, I hate you so much. What are the good life. skills? Uh, I mean, you so get, like, I mean, you get, you get. <laughs> this was something I was going to talk about later, but well, you you only have me. like a limited suite of force abilities. You have like push. I think you get pull at one. You get point. see pulls what I don't you have. The, everybody says you, you get can like get. the freeze, like the the slowdown yeah. ability, and I think that's it. So far, yeah, I don't think there are like a whole shit ton of. There are like. like Force attacks meter. that use your force meter as well yeah there's a bunch of there's a bunch of like um combos and stuff that you unlock in the skill tree um but most of that has to do with I, like lightsaber techniques and combos yeah. and, and like you can you can like health, use the force upgrades. to like do a quick rush forward and like swing the blade mm. or you know like i don't know like little shit like this is it's a lot more about the lightsaber first and then mm-hmm. kind of like augmenting it with force abilities hmm. but i think it's really cool because you know a lot of people are talking about how great it is that the that the single player jedi action game is back and i think it's fucking dope that that they are just relying on lightsaber and force powers because hmm. if you think about like most of the other games where you play a jedi you at least have like a blaster or yeah. something mm-hmm. because a lot of people just kind of lock yeah. into that whole shooter mentality when they're designing these things for sure for sure but hmm. i think i think it's fucking i mean it, it's very focused in terms of like the co- the combat is very focused around the that you know the lightsaber is kind of yeah. the pillar they, mm-hmm. i mean you're definitely supposed to be a jedi yeah and you know like i said when you go when you go back to like focusing on like with the combat when it works as a result like when you get when you get in a groove and a combo or whatever and it starts flowing and you're just do, pull, like doing things left and right, it feels wonderful. Hey, how do y'all feel about the story? Because like Force Unleashed did that too, but like they also got really stupid with Real Force quick, how do, you, how do y'all feel about the story? I'm into it. Uh, I was, so I was into it. I was into it in the first two chapters um, at the point where I'm at right now. And maybe that's just because I've seen a lot of this Kashyyyk stuff already multiple times because this is where they demoed it and everything. You free a lot of Wookiees. I mean, maybe this is the second time you freed a big pack of Wookiees. Maybe I'm just, I feel like I'm in a bit of a lull right now in terms of the story. Like, like I'm waiting for it to finally grab me again. Cause I was really into the whole, the intro where they, where they introduce you to Cal and like the situation he's in and like his initial, uh, conflict mm-hmm. and how he escapes. Like I, I was totally into that level. And then you go to this planet and you do some stuff. You meet this guy and like, like all oh, this all sounds really interesting. But ever since that happened, I haven't really had a whole lot of significant things happen in my story so far or since that point. So the subplot I'm, of like going through all these like Zepho ruins and finding these like force artifacts and shit like that is 
really cool and i like i kind of like that aspect yeah. of it and i think that's something conceptually that, i think it's great i think I, that's something that you don't see a lot in star wars that totally should be mm-hmm. in yeah. star wars it's i hear kinda more of that like indiana jones pulpy adventure yeah. i hear the final act of this the, game is like crazy cool yeah like apparently i i haven't really seen much of her yet but like the main villain the second sister mm-hmm. like apparently she's like a really cool character like, I, yeah, there's a lot going yeah, on yeah i'm like i'm still waiting that for, they like, get into i'm still waiting for her to like really make herself known because yeah. i've only run into her officially like once um so i'm re- i'm waiting for like the supporting cast to kind of take shape and um like like the, the friends you have on the ship seem cool i am not entirely sold on them yet in terms of as characters like there's i've had a few conversations with them that seem pretty that seem interesting but i'm still waiting to see where it goes um so in that sense, I'm I'm, I'm still kind of early. One thing I do want to mention because I'm not sure. So respawn has you know they have a history of doing a lot of shooters and stuff, and this is obviously their first. It's a very different kind of game for them. But the thing where you saw me jump down there and I found that like that dead Wookiee, and I was yes. able to like. There's a lot of finding little stuff off the beaten path like that, and they he, they they call it a force echo where he's able to like sense like what happened when he touches these mm, things. Yes. And there's a lot of things like that it's which awesome. are which are I guess technically interesting. But they all just feel kind of flat. Technically, like they're just like, oh, I touched this thing, and it's like, oh, somebody I, tried know, to take shelter here, hiding from the a, Empire, uh, and it's like, okay. So on 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 Kashyyyk, there's a whole bunch of them that that are about an an Imperial officer who was part of like an old um, excavation <laughs> operation there. Yeah, hmm. and I like I don't know, I was getting into it. Like I really liked it, and and it was kind of making me think like this is it's audio logs but like it's i don't know it's kind of refreshing that it's not just like somebody reading exposition to you it's more like you found this and then you found that and, and some of them kinda, have multiple pieces and it's kind of more just like suggesting the story to you instead of just like reading yeah it it, and it doesn't it doesn't stop the action for extended periods of time which is nice we yeah. got to wrap up this conversation. yeah i can't stand watching you do this i thing. know <laughs> you can go ahead and cut the footage so i don't have to watch myself ruin. <laughs> <laughs> let's watch him fail again over and God, to be honest i didn't think i did this this many times <laughs> recording the footage yeah, uh, i wonder if he's gonna make it this time this is rough Chris Davis, why No, you? he failed again. Stop the footage, Chris Davis. I can't watch this anymore. It's so bad. Um, but I want to return to this and talk about it after I've played more of it, finished it, maybe. Is uh, that what they call it? Call it Jedi Fallen Order? Yes. Because <laughs> he's, he's fallen. Lord. You son of a bitch. Uh, um, but yeah, anyways. So, Crispy, you're you're digging it. Brad, you never really didn't really say much about how you feel about the game overall. I'm surprised you were playing it, to be uh, honest. And me too. Why? I don't know. I just didn't think you were going to find time for it. Oh, well, you know, I, hey, I like Star Wars. What? Are you sure? Really? I like Reese. Has nobody Name t- every Wookiee. Oh, really? Has nobody I told mean, you it's they, for children? They, they said it was Souls meets Metroid. What the fuck do you want from me, man? I guess you're right. That is. <laughs> Plus, Star Wars sounds like awesome. And you know what? It's pretty cool. Um. Yeah, of course I found time for it. It's I played through Titanfall 2, It's dog. got that Star Wars, like... You know, Titanfall Two. It, it cool. feels more Force. Star Warsy than like Force Unleashed did. Yeah. Well, of course, Force Unleashed sucked. Yeah, it's been a long time since we had a good single player Star Wars game. So yeah, of course I'm into it. Yeah. Um. There are, by the way, a lot of those technical issues we talked about are apparently going to be addressed in a patch this week. Hmm. So maybe next week I'll have you know better things to say about it from a technical standpoint. We shall see. Anyways, let's. Uh. And again, this next game we're going to talk about. We talked about it a lot last week. So oh, we let's, did? Yes. Uh, let's not spend too long on it. It's. It, I'm just prefacing this because I, I feel like we could accidentally slip into a conversation for like an hour. Let's talk more about Death Stranding. No one has played a bunch more. A little bit. Of Death just, Stranding. Just a tiny bit. Uh, you've you've passed me. I, I, yes. I, you know, I kind of regret. Like I, I feel like maybe I should have waited until they patched Star Wars to like let myself get too into it. Probably. And spent more time playing Death Stranding until it was a smoother experience. Yes. Um, you can still do that. I know. And I'm probably going to. I'm probably just going to wait for that patch to, to hit before I go back to it. But uh, I've played like another six hours or so since last week. But you've played like mm-hmm. 50-something. <laughs> yeah. I don't know the exact and time Brett, I'm at. But last yeah. week, I listened to last week's conversation and Brad had, at, had closed that conversation by saying, what does this game look like at 50 hours? And you should have an answer for him now. Yeah, this is uh, kind of what it looks like. Uh, uh, spoilers. I played 30 minutes. There's a thing or two about handling a box, am I right? Yeah. I meant fragile. I've, I've Wait, you, so you started, Brett? Yes. I've, uh, did you build this road? About half yes, an hour. I did. In. Did you build that car? I did. 
Really? Yes. You build the car? I did. You build the car, you I build did. the roads. Okay. So yeah. like Banjo Kazooie nuts and bolts. Uh-huh. So Crispy wasn't here for our conversation he last wasn't. week. He wasn't. I wasn't. So so it's okay, honestly, you don't have to catch the me thing out. is, Brad, the first thing I wanted to bring up this week. Are you guys liking the game? You were, I'm, you were I'm driving it. a lot of back and forth on a big road last week in the footage. Yeah. Um well, you know what? That's part of it, and I'm honestly kind of doing this because I didn't want to be doing something else, but I ended up doing it anyway. But I mean, is uh, it like fun? Okay. So, okay. You should have been oh, here on. last yeah, week. Yeah, you should have been here last week. So, Brad, what I was going to bring up today, yes. which, uh, honestly, from what I have just heard 45 seconds ago, it's too late. I don't think this is the game for you. Damn. Um, I, that's kind of what I was saying. No. Yeah. and uh, uh, like So, here's the thing. I enjoy this game. Um, I do enjoy delivering packages, Crispy. Okay. Um, I have kind of been enjoying the story. Um, I think it does go you to some... all of this road. Yes. Here's the thing. You, um, don't, you don't control where the road is built. I mean, you, it's a set pathway, but you have to contribute materials. Uh, yes, you take materials you. and you put in that platform I just passed. You put uh, materials into that platform, and then it builds the road for you. A yeah. section of it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't control where the road goes. But other players can Other also players contribute can materials. contribute into my world, which is kind of the interesting thing. Um, and, and so there are definitely things. So you'll notice, Crispy, if you see anything in the environment that's green, yeah. that is from another player. If it's blue, it's from me. Okay. If it's green, that means on, like that green thing I just passed. Someone else built that. Oh. Um, and so, so yeah, so uh, hey, fucking keep on keeping on. Yep. Yeah. And here's the bullshit that always happens when you pass this section. BTs. There's there's BTs there, so it's gonna zoom in. Do you know what it fucking reminds me of? It reminds that? me of Final Fantasy 15 when you're driving at night oh, in the car, yes. and a monster yes. forces you to stop. Oh. I'm gonna be honest. This, this I'm surprised this has not been patched out yet. I, I will say this game Kojima's just it, released the perfect game. There's it, no patches. In strain, in a strange way, uh-huh. this game don't freak out, no one uh-huh. reminds me of Final Fantasy 15. No, no, I, in terms I got of it. Its, fo- its I vibe it. and its tone, or whatever. You sure? But I didn't just remind you of Final no, no, Fantasy no, I, I had this, no, no, no. I had this thought earlier this week, uh, not for the same reason that you were talking about necessarily, but just because you're driving in this kind of the like the open world is like. Similar to Final Fantasy 15 in that it's 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 a large open world that's actually like, you know, I don't know how to describe it, but you're you're spending a lot of time driving on roads, kind of like you in Final Fantasy 15. It's very open and kind of lonely, just like Final Fantasy 15. It's an expansive open world that makes you go, "Is this it?" No, <laughs> uh, no, that that <laughs> no, is not the case at all. That's definitely how I felt about 15. That is not the case at all it in this not. game, Crispy. So. Uh, what I can contribute to this conversation this week, because I don't have much mm-hmm. in addition to last week, is that um, I can say that like the gameplay loop in the, is I am thoroughly addicted to the gameplay loop in, the, yeah. in this game to the point where I was like, we were talking in Discord and I was like, well, no one said I need to get to chapter five, right? You know why? Because you get access to more things. You're gonna get access to the thing I'm about I, to use. I've, in this I've, it's already been spoiled. Is okay, it a helicopter? No, no. Oh, you got Damn. The otter hat. It's already been yes, spoiled for me, so hat. don't worry about it. Okay. Uh, and in fact, I think if you're talking, oh, you what did you deliver to Cone? Um, some stuff. Okay. Sex doll. Yeah, totes. Um, but like, I'm. This, you know, I've, I, I listened. Oh, to I heard a, about this. So I listened dude, to another. It's pretty fucking awesome. <laughs> I listened to another oh, podcast cool. that was talking about you Death Stranding. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I was I was listening to another podcast that was talking about Death Stranding, and it's I found out it, like one thing that you can definitely say is this game inspires really interesting discussion because hearing other people talk about this game versus hearing us talk about this game is like two totally different worlds. Well, of course. And and I think that's great because a lot of games you hear two groups of people talk about the same game and they have very similar discussions. Mm-hmm. Not really the case with this game. Um, and it, in, it kind of just exemplifies that, you know, this game isn't for everybody. There are going to be people who, who see the gameplay loop, see how different it is, and see how weird and out there and maybe... And they're going to interpret it as, like, I don't find it very fun. And I don't even know why I find it as fun as I do. I think it's... But, really, I think it's you got to think about it like any kind of, like, older, like, maybe, like, Assassin's Creed game or Far Cry game where you're in this big open world and they're like, hey, I need you to go over here and do this thing. And, uh, cool, just go do that. And you're like, oh, yeah, I'll go do that thing. Oh, hey, look, there's a thing in the world I can collect. Oh, hey, let me pick this thing up. It's this kind of thing where, like, I don't want to say, like, ADD, but it's kind of, you see the thing off in the distance, and you're like, ooh, what's that? I'm curious about that. Oh, I see a little icon on my map. I want to investigate that thing. And it's kind of this just really, um, this, like, amalgamation of there's so much shit in the world 
ladder that right there. catches you. Well, the yeah, I stopped taking that ladder because the ladder's slower than just climbing up that thing. <laughs> I'm probably in the next time I'm in that section, I'm gonna remove that other person's ladder. Can you from dislike my game. people? Yeah, people, no, you can't. But you can remove it from people. Your world. Leave ladders in really dumb locations. Yes, I saw, they do. I saw someone build a bridge. Like I was like, why is this bridge here? It's like a huge. It's like a little tiny pond. Or like a like a stream yeah. that has like when you do the the thing that tells you the terrain, yeah. it's like all blue. Yeah, you could just wade through it. No, b Nick, I've seen in the <laughs> middle of an open field with no rocks or anything a random bridge, and there's like forty thousand likes on it, and so, I'm like, fuck off. <laughs> so here's here's something that. <sighs> What's up, crispy? What's up? I don't know. Tell me, uh, tell me your words. How important are the BTs or whatever to the actual like story and world because that seemed to be like a big thing oh they're, they're advertising it but now it just kind of seems like it's a thing that happens every once in a while no, while you're delivering packages they're, they definitely play a big role in the story yes um, and they play beyond the fact that they are like the inciting incident for all of this I mean yeah I mean yes. so much of the of the of the well an inciting incident for all of this was uh, the void out right or well, no, a void out the, but the, I mean the death the strand, death stranding the de but I still don't know what it is you, yeah maybe you do at this point I, I do know. not <laughs> um, I don't think Chris Davis even knows <laughs> so yeah I'm pretty I sure I think you will probably find out what the death stranding is at our 99.99% uh, of your gameplay yeah wonderful like, I guess what like is this a game about dealing with BTs? No, no, not necessarily. They're, they're, that is an aspect. They but. are an they are an obstacle to they're prevent like, you from accomplishing yeah. your objectives. But like as much as a mountain is an right, obstacle. Right, but here's the thing, and and Nolan but actually you wouldn't say this game's about so, mountains. So not necessarily. So and this is something I brought up to Nick early on when you first kind of start interacting with BTs. You're like, oh well, fuck BTs! Yeah. Oh my god! At this point in the game, when I interact with BTs, yeah. I'm like, fucking bring it on, bitches! I'm gonna kill you. What do you do to them? So, so um, they are affected. By certain people's blood and poop, uh, and uh, less so poop uh, than blood. The Wait, pee, is there poop. The in pee the game? and poop grenades do different things. There are they pee do. and poop. Yes. There are pee. Wait, you know how you get this, these. This conversation can't be explained. What and death pooping. is. No, I know, I know. But like, I, I, these are just a bunch of granular questions to try to figure out well, if, if the game is for you. Anything. Well, no, it is definitely something. I He's mean, the, the, the fact that I played it for 50, Nick's played it for like 40 I something, know. and Chris Davis has played it for like 80 or something. Uh, I'm actually only like 26, but. 26, yeah. whatever. Wait a minute. 58, okay, okay, whatever. but like, are Chris you. Chris Davis is like, kind of cool on this game. You guys are having fun playing the game, right? Yes, correct. This isn't like a, oh, I'm playing this because I'm experiencing something. This is like, I just kind of want to like sit down and play a game, so I'll play Death Stranding. No, no, I'm, I am like. Fully into yeah, people it. seem I, like super addicted to this game. I, I think there's a so couple. There's a couple of different things that are addicting. A, um, I do find some of the people that you interact with at the different kind of uh, what would you call them? Not the the uh, safe houses. Not safe houses. They're like uh, way stations. Way stations and stuff like that. Some bunkers, of those. Some of bunkers. those people are pretty interesting. The bunkers. Some of them have interesting stories. Uh, some of them uh, actually have. It's much more than just a person standing at a place. Yeah. Um, some of them interact with other people in the world. Dude, huh. I went to. So without spoiling too much, I went to uh, a bunker yesterday, and for the first time, for the first time, someone actually came. Physically came out. Oh, yeah, I, like, I know which oh, one you're talking about. I was like, oh shit, there are there are actually for, for the most things. part you usually interact with someone like via like a hologram. Like they're inside the bunker, but they don't come out to see you. Right. They're just like, hey, you're outside my bunker. Thanks for delivering this package for me. But every once in a while they come out, and you're like, oh shit, it's a person. Yeah. Um. So take this with a grain of salt. And this is maybe just to answer your question, but like fun or or whatever. Like, are you enjoying the time with it? Like, you know me. You know. You know my uh do i nick yeah i thought i do know me you know me thought i'm feeling the same kind of like not exactly the same but very similar like addiction feelings as like the way i felt about red dead redemption 2 Whoa. last year in terms of like i couldn't stop see playing. okay okay How? at the risk of like taking this down a tangent that's another game too where it's like i almost feel like red dead redemption 2 is a game that like you're playing for like an experience not necessarily because it's like satisfyingly fun i mean i i disagree with that i can see why some people don't you know yeah, feel that way yeah, it's yeah, the same yeah. way about it yeah, yeah, yeah. um and i feel like, like maybe no, man, no man's guy I, I like i guess what i'm saying is am i going into this like it's a marvel movie or like it's a art house film Ooh, yes <laughs> somewhere in the middle yeah it's definitely in the middle um like a24 production here, here's what i here's what i could tell you about i'm going it. into this like it's hereditary here's what i would say about it crispy is one no matter 
what no is no there's no other way to say this other than like this game conceptually speaking is just wildly different than sure. anything else out sure. there um, and whether some people find that to be fun yeah. or not is maybe gonna... we just don't have the vocabulary to talk about things that aren't action games and shooters and like when somebody right. comes out with something completely different we're all just like mm. Right. Well, no, I, I can definitely explain like, this game and why it's interesting to me and why I've been enjoying playing it. We will it. talk about it when everyone finishes. Uh, but but that's where I'm year. at because I, I haven't played it, so I'm just trying yeah. to like wrap my head around. Well, no, and so that's what I was saying, what Brad. Is, is I honestly, from your opinions on the things that Dark you souls of your that you like about games <laughs> and the things that you enjoy doing in the in the style of gameplay that that really hooks you. I honestly don't think this is a this game for you. This looks fun. Everything I've seen of this game looks I mean, looks it looks cool. crazy. It looks so, I mean, it's... you spend so much time trying to, like, find... So much time trying to find ways across really rough terrain. And I feel... And sometimes that requires you to make sacrifices. Like... I'm gonna have to abandon this truck and. F- and oh no, definitely. It. There have definitely been times where I've had to leave trucks and leave shit behind because I'm like, so, and, and so that you know, we've seen in this footage that you unlocked zip lines. Yeah, and that's something that that really does change your gameplay. There was a good two to three hours of me just being like, all right, I'm going to set up a fucking zip line network around this world. And it's like, I would drive a truck somewhere, I would fucking load the shit up on my back and just start running now. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to put a zip line here, I'm going to put a zip line here, and then test them and do all this stuff. And one of the things that we had talked about, and I think, I don't know if it was last week or the week before, but Chris Davis was talking to me, I think, before the show about, oh, you know, getting to the elder is so difficult, but if you do this and do this, now getting to the elder is not a thing I shy away from. Because so, it's like, oh, dude, I have a zipline network. I don't care. I can get to him in fucking 48 seconds, and I'm there. That's an interesting thing I want to ask you about. Because it seems like a big part of the like progressive arc of this game mm-hmm. is about making travel more feasible. Yes. Right? You go from, like, carrying all these boxes and, like, stumbling around and tripping on rocks and shit to, like, building roads and driving trucks and ziplines and all this shit. Once you've gotten to that point in the game where you're doing this kind of stuff... Mm-hmm. Is it still? Does it still give you that same kind of satisfaction? Or yes. Do you feel like it loses a little? And, and so I want to say yes because there are definitely areas that you go to that you can't take vehicles. Yeah. There are sometimes you can't. You just physically can't do it. Sure, or sure. there are new areas. And sure, so sure. He, he, here's the thing, uh, Crispy. There are areas that you will interact with um, that if they are not a part of the network. Yeah. Meaning uh, there are uh, bunkers and buildings in certain places, and you have to get to them first before you can before you can connect them. Connect them. Uh, and if they are not. Building connections. Exactly. So if you if you have not built that connection, you cannot build a zip line in that area. And so this is me. This is an or example. Everyone in the fucking lines. feed of the world who's watching this, please like other people's shit. I found this guy's generator very useful, so I gave him a shit ton of likes because he deserves it. How many likes can you give somebody? You can give them a shit ton of I likes. I think you can give them a thousand per thing before it uh, actually no, it, So it depends. A you get you get butler. You get X amount of seconds to give them likes, and you can just mash the like button... Um, and the to, likes are made from your semen. Yeah, probably, right? Uh, I don't know about that. Uh, but yeah, so so this is, and, and like I said, this footage is just kind of boring because this just happened to be where I was at in the game. How There's, representative is, oh, is this so of this the is, game? This is the section of mules, and mules are essentially just bad people, um, and I'm kind of going to avoid them because I have a mission. You can see on the mules. top right, yeah, mules are like bad people. They're trying to steal your packages. They want to steal your packages. Oh. Um, yeah, on the top right, that they're, I'm actually on a timeline. Pirates. Yeah, I'm on a timeline right now. I have to get to this next place in the next 33 oh, minutes. Fuck. Otherwise, I think I'm delivering blood samples. Uh, they, they're going to go bad. Uh, and so I am on a timeline, so I'm kind of trying to rush there. But I'm also, I'm like, hey, I got some supplies with me. I'm going to build some of these roads out along my way um, as I will, I'm trying I will to get say there. That, I will say this, too. Like, I, I think you, Crispy, yeah. funnily enough, since even though you haven't played it, you kind of articulated maybe what the game actually is and the game the satisfaction of the game is constantly getting new things that make traversal easier it's not even just traversal it, it's it's traversal it is uh, making uh, in- life it's making life it's easier. making life easier so you'll get uh, an augmented skeleton that allows you to carry more packages or move around more quickly um you will get the one thing i just recently got um, was I got a uh, a wrapper for my packages. So it literally wraps around them. And a, prov- tarp. a tarp. Oh. A tarp. Brad. Brad, you get a tarp. So I have a tarp that will wrap around my packages oh, that shit. prevents them from getting damaged from timefall. Um, I got um, you know different types of vehicles, vehicles with extended batteries, vehicles that have 
Um, uh, I just got the ability last night to uh, like actually augment my my uh, backpack. So oh yeah, so adding yeah, adding stuff, adding pouches to your backpack, adding a battery pack to your backpack, so that augmented skeleton you have that lets you carry more weight that takes a battery. Yeah, it will last longer. I, I um, feel like the ceiling on like it's cool that arc right, but mm-hmm. it seems very gradual. Like, but it also feels like the ceiling is going to be before we get, I don't know, flying crafts or jetpacks or something. And Um, I I feel like. I honestly don't think. I think the zip line, I think, is probably the most advanced. I think. No jetpacks. I don't think there's going to be jetpacks. Zero out of 10. I will say this. Like, all of the upgrades and gadgets that, that that I've been getting, I've been seeing other people playing with and stuff, all seem really cool. And that sense of, like,. Advancement and progression seems really awesome. Um, We've talked a little about the story, and I don't want to get into that right now because I honestly I feel like that's something that should wait until y'all finish the game. Um, so like any but, like I will agree with you, Brad, that like any Kojima game, I don't think any of us know what the fuck's going on yet. Yeah. Um, I still think we yeah. have just little we, bits and pieces. I think it's one of those things where when I'm eighty percent of the game, I will have understanding of twenty percent of the story, and then once I hit that hundred yeah. percent, that's when the extra eighty will come. There's in. gonna be, I, yeah, I've heard. I believe I've heard I've heard talk. Mm-hmm. I've heard talk. I'm not 100. I don't know if this is confirmed, so I could be talking my ass. But I've heard like the, like the final like ending cinematic in this game is like over an hour long. Like, no, that's that's like nothing. Look, I would not be look, surprised I, by I, that. You, what I what I've heard is never plan to finish a Kojima game at night. Yeah. Like like like, like <laughs> yeah. wake up early on a Saturday morning, then plan to finish it yeah. because it's going to be at least three hours of the beautiful stuff. thing. The beautiful thing is that rest mode actually allows you, will actually pause. Yes, that is true. That is that is one of the things that this is a fantastic game around just being able to put my PS4 in rest mode. I don't know if Nyan's telling the truth, but Nyan says it's two hours. All right, I believe yeah, it. But that's yeah. I mean, that's not. Dude, there's nothing been time. The other, the other three, day, I told right? Bernadette, like, hold on, cool. I was I was about to wrap up this mission. Let me go upstairs and wrap it up real quick. And it was a good like thirty minute cutscene of like shit. I mean, I'm hey, gonna hey. I'm gonna be honest. We we need to we do need to wrap it up. But I like crispy. This is one of those like whether you end up liking it or not. I feel like I'm really interested to see your reaction to it. Oh, yeah. Just because yeah. you're like you're like really into like science fiction and stuff like that, and like this is a. This is so out there yeah. in terms of its And its you guys approach. know how much I love Monster Energy. <laughs> yes. yes. Wait, I have a final question. And it's not for you, Nick. Although you seem higher on this game than you were last week. Uh, I mean, like, I'll tell you this. When I, is it closing in on Days Gone? When I just... Fuck off. When I decided to put down Star Wars temporarily, temporarily while I wait for the patch, mm-hmm. I was like... I, I started playing this. Because I was like, I was getting really frustrated with, with Star Wars because of all the technical like problems I was having. And like last night, I sat down and I played this for like three and a half hours straight. And I was like... Oh, Heaven. Okay. Uh, okay. Wait. Wait. I have the final question. Can you unmute Chris Davis's mic? Okay. From what I understand, and I don't want you to get in- into it, Chris Davis is a little bit cooler on this game than some of the other people in this room, which is fine, like not right? quite as hype. Is that true? C- can you give me a yes or no to that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, my my opinion. Wait. Hasn't... Wait. 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 Let him get the question out. Famously. Famously. This is about to flip on you. Chris famously. <laughs> oh shit. You're a lot. You were a lot hotter on Metal Gear Survive <gasps> than Facts. a lot of people out oh, there. Facts. No. In yeah. fact, the only reason you didn't put it in your top ten was out of shame. Davis, no, oh my god! Track. I just realized no, how no. similar this is to Metal Gear so, Survive. So here's my question. Oh, he's, that he's fa- here's my question. Do you, Metal Gear Survive <laughs> do you like Metal Gear Solid Five? <laughs> or, or me- sorry, Metal Gear Solid Survive more than Death Strand? Oh, say it. And I want you to be completely 100% Say it. honest. Do it. Don't be ashamed. Chris Do it. Davis. Don't be ashamed. Do it. Speak the truth. In some ways. That's a yes. That's that's a yes. In some ways, yes. <laughs> he, he I, muted I <laughs> Perfect. Move on, Nick. No, 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 Transition. No, 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 no. Let me let me finish my thought before you fucking screw me over for the next week and a half over the next podcast. No, no, no. In some ways, because I have not completed Death Stranding. I don't know the full scope of the story. <laughs> Metal Gear Survives so has some oh slightly God. better oh. gameplay systems. <laughs> However, I meant to say, stop the footage. <laughs> oh no, stop the footage! <laughs> well, I mean, I don't. Honestly, you're not going to see anything too do spoiler or anything. You're going to see some weird shit. But he it's, dropped a baby. How, yeah. how many times do you see Nor? <laughs> How many times do you see Norman Reedus' peen in this game? None. No, no, no. Really? no. Come on. We're no, interrupting no, Chris no Davis. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm Chris sorry. Davis is answering. Chris. But overall, I'm liking Death Stranding more than Metal Gear Survive. Okay. okay. All right. There we go. Okay. Overall. Let's revisit that question after he's finished it, because yeah. he will be the first one to finish it, I'm so, pretty sure. Uh, maybe. 
Um, I so, mean, I'm so, just mainlining it. I'm at 60 hours. And so, yeah, so so that's kind of actually one of the things I wanted to bring up now that I'm Muna Chris Davis. I honestly think you can probably beeline this game pretty fucking quick. I think it's one of those scenarios where the, the chapters, quote, are not that long. I think it's more of the, you get the idea in your head that it's like, hey, I'm over at South Knot City. What? I have... That's not it. They have weird names have, for the yeah. cities. South Knot City. Lake Knot City. Lake South Knot City. City. Yeah. Like, way stations. Like K N O T. Yeah. Oh, yeah. K N O T. Like, like a knot. Gotcha. Um, I have this, but this city has a package delivery for there. I wasn't really going to go there, but since I have this package delivery, I might as well do it. Whoa. And I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of that. There's a lot of, oh, I don't necessarily need to do this, but since this is here, I'm going to do it. Die and, Hard Man last night told me. Make sure don't ever All, go yeah. anywhere empty handed. I'll always like, be delivering. You <laughs> like that's basically son, what they say. You it's like you're basically it's for clothes. They they they're basically it's an Amazon um distribution facility. Yeah. They're like you have 45 seconds yeah. pee break and then you have to be delivering. We we have your quota you have to meet. No. So the game just kind of emphasized that, but like I said, there's nothing that says you have to. There's nothing stopping you progressing. Uh, by making sure every city has a, a five-star connection. In all honesty, it, you can probably just do those missions. Like I said, Nick, there will be missions, and they're highlighted can, in orange. If you can suppress the urge. If you just do those missions, I would not be surprised if you could beat this game in, like, 25 hours. I've got I've got one more final question for What's you up? guys. Uh, last question. How long, like, when I buy this game and I go and start playing it, like, how, how long from opening the program to like getting into the actual gameplay loop am i looking at uh i mean right away we, yeah like what, pretty soon like an hour the ac- yeah hour pre- and a half pretty quick to actually get to like the general the general gameplay loop but we mentioned it last week that you have we encourage everybody to, to kind of book it to chapter three crispy because- within, within like a minute and a half you're picking up packages yeah yeah. It's pretty yeah. fucking quick, yeah. but then the story kind of kicks off, and it's maybe I did not expect that. It maybe like an hour before like the loop starts. They, they introduce a lot of like the really weird shit. Just like they throw it at you yeah. like really fast. They're like, like bam! Opening, like in the opening cutscenes, like oh, the rain makes you age. Who's this chick with the weird umbrella? Yeah. What the fuck is <laughs> Eat that? Eat this thing! Yes, nice. like, pick up that box. Pick it up. Go. Pretty much. <laughs> exactly. Um, Deliver the box. But the thing is, like, you, if you race through chapters one and two, you could probably. Do do that in an hour and a couple hours uh like, well, so, so and he, then i hit chapter three and then i spent like so he, yeah here's one thing i'll say everyone keeps saying get to chapter three and then people spend like literally 20 30 hours in chapter three that's me you could probably get through chapter three in like two hours and i oh, wow. say get to chapter five because my that's predi- where the shit goes my good. prediction next week no one's gonna say just get to chapter seven <laughs> Just finish the game. Just All right. finish the game. Just get to the credits. Just real quick, real quick, get to the credits, and then the game starts. And then start your playthrough B. Yeah. All, right, all, right, all right, guys. <laughs> I got I got two games right, to talk about. But I know. Let's take no. Let's take a lightning fast break. Lightning See, round. Wow. Lightning fast I, break. Two games. I know. Two uh, games. Lightning fast break. Everybody go pee real quick. We'll come right back. Let's all go pee together. We're going to talk about Superliminal, and we're going to talk about the Yakuza Seven demo with Brad. And I've, then, I finished Superliminal. You oh. played the whole thing. Yes. Is it good? Shut the fuck up. We're literally <laughs> on a podcast. Let's go make some EX1 grenades. <laughs> Let's do it. Is we'll that be... the poop grenade? No, it's, <laughs> oh, it's P because it's one. Yeah. So EX2 is yes! poo-poo. That is exactly <laughs> what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to fade into the break with Crispy laughing. I, always, I love that every once in a while, I just see Brad tweet, and all it says is, sci-fi, no! And I know exactly what happened. Yeah. Exactly. I literally don't open Twitter at work unless I'm off Wi-Fi. You, you can't... <laughs> because of sci-fi. Yeah. <laughs> you never know when Twitter's going to go and, and switch you back to home, and you're never going to notice I it. Can make, I can make... Uh, I can make a list on Twitter called Sci-Fi and just unfollow her and add her to that there list. You go. And then everyone's going to be like, "Oh, let's go see what Sci-Fi's 
retweeting i'm feeling frisky <laughs> <laughs> i'm feeling like i'm in a private place <laughs> all right anyways i'm just we're just, like I'm we're just kidding scared. sci-fi we love you all right uh, sci-fi doesn't watch our streams anymore Ash, that's true she, that, in every now and she then. does she does check in on us every once in a while okay i guarantee you she's not here now somebody tell sci-fi about project m3 okay hey let's start this podcast i mean we, we've already started we've already started this podcast we are recording right now brad you have two games to tell us i've about. been playing two new and exciting things hit us up which up. would you like to hear about first? Nick? Superliminal. Superliminal. I th- Lord knows we've heard about. No, I'm sorry. Just is it good? I finished this. Oh um, yeah. On is it sh- good? Sh- How many hours? You Forty-eight. Guys, you guys are like European journalists. Give us <laughs> the number. Is it, is it better what? than Days Gone? Give us. The How number. many pounds? Um, <laughs> it's uh, it's not very long and it's pretty good. How many okay. meters would you say it is? It's uh. W- <laughs> Ed brought this up on Y'all our pack. Trash. Ed, You're trash. <laughs> now you know how I feel sometimes You're about trash. you, Brad. Uh, but I, I, Euro trash. Did you say Euro trash? Ed brought this. Po- Ed, Ed talked about this game on our most recent PAX West uh, episode. Uh-huh. Oh, he played uh-huh. the PAX West and talked about it. So well, good for him. Ed, I finished no, it. It sounds really fucking Suck cool. Suck my dick, Ed. Ex- oh. <laughs> Explain it, Brad. Exp- uh, so have you played like Portal or something? Yes. It's uh, like what's one that? of those Portal. Yeah, but but you got a first person puzzler is, is the, with what, a unique mechanic. Wait, is Portal from the people who are doing uh, Half Life VR? Oh yeah, the Half Life Alex. <laughs> We're gonna talk about that, you fuckers. <laughs> the VR oh, shit, we are. You guys are look so so this is a first person puzzler where the gimmick is the objects that you interact with are as you perceive them. Gotcha. Okay. And so like if if you so it's hard to describe. Mm-hmm. But it's really interesting. So, like, if you're far away from an object, it, it, when you pick it up... It's forced perspective. If, I, I, don't, I don't know what that means. But, like, if if something is appears to be very far away, or to be very large, mm-hmm. I should say... It is actually... So, if you're standing it, it, right in front of it, the object is very big. If you're standing very far away, the object is actually very small. Yes. Yeah, sort of. Oh, oh my fuck. Well, that's the thing. I mean, that's sort of the very baseline for mm-hmm. the the how the things work in this game, right? Mm-hmm. And it's like a pretty interesting mechanic, right? So like they did a tech demo demoing this technology years and years ago, and I was always like super fascinated by it, and I was glad to finally find out that they're actually turning it into a first-person puzzle game, which you always expected they would. Like literally like 6 years ago, I think I saw this tech demo, right? Sure. And <laughs> And what I've what I've what I've come to realize is playing this game is that they're really like that tech is super impressive, but maybe they're not like the most accomplished at like making a really impressive like first person puzzle game. In that um execution could be a little sloppy at times and um like maybe they kinda of run out of ideas. This is a very short game. You could probably play it in a couple hours. I mean if, if you're if you're if you're uh, like Portal. Yeah, but so like the one of my problems with this game is it tries to do the portal thing of like having voices like kind of talk to you and and you think it tries to do it, the humor thing, the humor thing. Or, I mean, you know, uh, like, it, it, uh... no, the the more of the thing of like, hey, what's really going on here, mm-hmm, and trying yeah. to figure out and like poking around the edges and that sort of thing, right? Sure. At least in that execution, like writing wise, humor wise, seems or like Stanley Parable is so another one, right? Fact. Of a first-person puzzle game that yeah. relies a lot on like really quality writing and uh, really good humor and jokes and stuff, and I feel like this stuff, this game tries to do it, but it feels like really by the numbers and not like a really exceptional one of those in terms of that aspect, like the writing and the presentation and and how clever the game can be in terms of like outside of like the, the core mechanics, which are really clever. Um, that and I, I don't think it, it like expands on any idea and like any any one idea in any remarkable way. Mm-hmm. But when I, by the time I was finished with this game, I I was really, I I was really happy um, because it, the game kind of does something towards the end of the game that <clears throat> made me think about everything that had come before it like differently. And and, and it's kind of hard to hmm, it's kind of hard to I. I, I it's not really a spoiler, but I should say it, it, it's hard. It's hard to ex- describe, like given that this game is all about, you know, uh, per, how we perceive things and 
and whatnot in terms of like the mechanics, right? Sure. And maybe the story. It, it, it's all about like, you know, actually kind of like being in like a dream state, right? And everything kind of feels like in a dream, right? Uh, like you're in a dream because you're using these mechanics that are very like dreamlike, right? Yes. But, but by the time you get to the final act of the game, it starts doing something. Um, it, it it sort of sets like rules for for this world, like believe it or not, as weird as it is and how constantly changing it is. I mean, the game is all about like surprising you with its mechanics, and you might see some stuff here in a second that seems like very surprising. But the end just becomes like this this uh, tour de force of uh, of just kind of like as you like to call it sometimes in Nick, like uh, as you like to call it sometimes Nick in games, like really trippy shit, right? You know, like non Euclidean stuff. I or feel like, attacked. No, I mean, don't, <laughs> don't, but, Whoa, but, but that was surprising. Whoa. So it is all about surprising things. Right. So then when you get to this final act and it really starts doing weird shit, like it's, it starts blowing your mind more than kind of the really rope puzzle game up to that point. Mm -hmm. Did My even though that play. puzzle game is all about kind of blowing your mind. It, it's really hard to describe without spoiling it, but it's I mean, it's not even like I'm trying to like It's not even like something I can spoil but like where it goes like visually and mechanically it, it, it reminds me of like, you know, the final act of like journey or whatever Like I'm just so happy. I'm experiencing this thing And I think everything up to that point is just sort of in service of that moment happening mm -hmm. That's um, cool um, and, and I don't want to oversell it. All I'm going to say is I was kind of really just a chess piece. Yes. yes. Well, is oh, it, okay, is sorry. It it's a tiny. Chess well, so, piece. so, but, but look what actually happens, right? It's like, oh, Hey, a chess piece. I picked it up. I lined it up and wait, actually, I just wait, what the fuck's going on in this game? Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what uh, the fuck? But, but again, it all seems like a lot of little neat ideas in a, in a, a kind of iffy puzzle game. Like, it reminds sure. me of a lot of the first-person puzzle games that started to come out after, like, Portal was a success. Not like Talos Principle, but the ones that you heard were kind of, like, okay, but not, like, amazing. Like, mm -hmm. like um... Oh, the Turing Test? Yeah, like the fucking Turing I Test. Like the or, Turing like, test. Hey, I like the Turing Test. Or, or maybe test. the one that Kim Swift did after Portal, um, Qu which was uh, Quantum, Quantum Conundrum, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, this seems, like, even maybe rougher than but some of those in terms of... But, again, it builds to something that's really quite remarkable and, um... And I was really glad that I I kind of experienced it. There, there's a level in this game that's like straight up scary. It, like like mm. they they take these ideas and say, all right, what if we made a, a like a horror level based on that? It's like brief and it's but it's like kind of exciting. You know what this game really reminds me of? It, it, it made me think. And when when it popped into my head, it's like, oh my god, how did this not happen? This game seems like the narbacular drop. Narbacular of, drop. of a. Uh, so, so you Did know, you just have a stroke. So, no, Bracular Drop was the indie uh, project that the that a small team made that was eventually purchased by Valve, and then they went on to make a super high budget polished game called Portal. Oh, mm. right, 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 right. This right. seems like Valve should have bought this fucking studio, and all this stuff should have been what's in Portal Three. Hmm. Because it's fucking remarkable, right? The tech is remarkable. By the way, I completely break it here. Um, I, mm -hmm. I, I just fall out of the game. It's a little, like, rough around the edges. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. And you're just falling to your death forever. Yeah. That wasn't supposed to happen. Now so, you're like, playing with There's portals. some, like, really crazy cool stuff. Like, so, like, there are kind of, like, portals, right? As you just saw, right? Mm -hmm. But when you go into, like, one portal, you can, since you can control the size, when you go into a portal that's really big on one side and really small on the other, you, all of a sudden, you come out of that you portal. You come out that And you're, size. like, extremely yeah. fucking tiny. Yeah. And that's, like... That, these are ideas that would have been really flushed out in, in a really polished and smartly written game called Portal Three. Mm -hmm. This is the this is the studio that Valve should have bought, yeah. right? Just like they did with Portal One, and then they did with Portal Two. Um, with uh, I think they bought this the the guys or the studio that made a tag or whatever, which was the one huh. that, that remember all the paint mechanics yeah, in Portal yeah, Two. Yeah, yeah. That oh, that came yeah. from like a small rough indie project as well. Um, man. Well, who knows? Maybe this is slightly related to a news topic we'll talk about shortly. <laughs> so all I could say is, is I'm showing you some like early game stuff, even though it's not a very long game, and I, I don't mean to like spoil puzzles or anything. But uh, but like I said, it built to something that was pretty remarkable, uh, and people who were watching on the stream were kind of there with me as I was experiencing that, and it was very special. It, spe it was kind of special, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was glad I played it. Cool. But I also played something else, Nick. All right. Well, 
it's time it's that time again time to talk about a yakuza game but see this is not any other yakuza game right this is the one i thought y'all would want to hear about because this is the rpg no i mean no, you're right i'm just i'm only it's it's mo- it's mostly just commentary on, on the fact that i can remember the day when like there was a question as to whether the next yakuza game would even come to the united states yeah i know and now all of a sudden we are like eight games deep in a yep. series <laughs> you know what i mean so so this it's how they- this is yakuza 7 right this is the new yakuza game and it is an rpg um it is it has turn-based combat and uh it's pretty fucking cool so uh one of the one of the things that is uh that i i kind of didn't expect i i i I, I heard mentioned in articles and stuff okay by the way it's funny because last yakuza game i talked about was yakuza uh uh the the remake of the second one right yeah and Kiwami and, 2? Kiwami 2 and i specifically recorded footage of a side mission that involved a, a very similar place to the one I'm about to go into, and you kind of do it in Yakuza Seven, mm-hmm. which is kind of great. Oh, <laughs> no. Why are all these men in diapers? I do remember that. Okay, so this is an RPG, but it's more totally. of an, it's more of it's more of just Yakuza with turn-based combat. Like they put a lot of effort into little details that make it feel like an RPG. Those look like big details it, to me. It, and in articles and stuff like, the, uh, uh, is this a kink? I've uh, yes. Um, Everything in articles next. and stuff they mention that that like the creators really love like Dragon Quest <laughs> and that there's going to be stuff in the game that's like very reminiscent of like like very old school like Dragon Quest games <laughs> like, and like the sound effects and the music and stuff it's very surprising. Um, they're like they're like eight bit like little sound effects like when someone joins your party it's like an old school party joining mm-hmm. music like little jingle mm-hmm. and like those little things and even when I get into into this battle it's like eight bit trance music. And it's fucking great. Now I realize that recording Yakuza footage and showing Yakuza footage makes it hard to talk about Yakuza to a room is of people. Is this an attack? This is a summon. A summon. So he used his phone to call to summon a bunch of lobsters. Yeah, yeah. Those look like prawns. <laughs> yeah. When I finish this subquest, those are definitely. Lobsters. When I finish this subquest, I will get a summon. Oh my god! <laughs> I will get a new summon because it seems like a lot of the subquests. Is give it you, a baby man? Oh, just watch. It's, it, it's in the footage, and it is amazing. <laughs> All, all I'm saying is there's a lot of little details in here that, that make it feel like you're playing an old RPG way more than you'd expect. Also, there's a job class system. Dude. <laughs> dude, and I, 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 tur- I turned this really buff like like dude into a breakdancer as like his job class. Mm-hmm. Wait, so is has- that why that guy's breakdancing? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> like in a second, I'll, I'll go ahead and kind of show you like the jobs. Um, the, the job. Fuck? I changed her into like an idol star. Mm-hmm. I, okay. Of course. This actually looks like something <laughs> I might play. Is there magic? I would assume uh, so. Of course, there's fucking magic. This guy was originally a bum. I turned him into like a really like fancy yakuza like wear, suit wearing dude. He has an attack where he can like summon pigeons and stuff. He'll throw <laughs> like breadcrumbs on the player, <laughs> and like all these pigeons will fly in an attack. It, okay. it is. It, this is like. This I is can't like, tell you enough how awesome th- this music is right here. This is like yakuza unhinged. You know, <laughs> like. But see, yakuza's already been unhinged, right? But this is just sort of a new take on it. And I, I do think they're leaning into the the crazy a little bit more. I feel like this dude's a little bit uh, more out there than than Kiryu Kazuma was. Yeah. And and you'll see in, in a second. Like I've done this type of mission before, right? Mm-hmm. Um, literally with with Kiryu. Um, and I think at the end, Kiryu's like, "Oh, this is ridiculous." But, you know, he's always like, "This is ridiculous. I can't believe I'm in these situations." But at the end of this quest, I'm about to share like a bottle of milk with like one one of these dudes <laughs> i don't even know i don't really know what's going on because it's all in japanese obviously but then i kind of know what's going on right i could tell that he's a little cooler than than kiryu is mm-hmm. um look at his hair you know yeah is so, there is there like a what like, is, is there still like a like an underlying like like yakuza <laughs> it's story going like a of course know? of course yeah and, and like you're you're exploring a new city you're not in kamurocho it's a new <gasps> city and mm. and but you're still kind of getting into sub stories following your little red arrow to get to the main story mission it plays outside of battle a lot like a yakuza game i do do some like there's new like mini games and stuff um but uh but outside of like combat techniques uh in uh in you know a lot of these rpg mechanics and a lot of the little rpg details like in the sound effects and the music i'm telling you it adds a lot it's like it's like a pretty remarkable feeling playing like a high fidelity yakuza game I, mm-hmm. but, but that feels is, like an rpg i know this is a dumb question and i'm pretty sure they've already uh, announced this but i just want to make sure this is confirmed coming to the united states right 
Uh, yes, yes, of course. I mean, every every Yakuza thing does. That. I know. I mean, I, we I got fucking it... judgment fully localized in English, yeah. um, like voice acting. So, like, uh, of course we're gonna get this. They, they, so, so one of the concerns I had uh, going, uh, when I heard about this is that you know, in Yakuza, you you get into a lot of like combat scenarios, right? Sure. And are you still gonna be getting into as as many combat scenarios in this game as you do in the other ones? And the answer is yes. But surprisingly, everything in this game, like the UI, getting into battle, getting out of battle, like going through all those screens, it feels really quick, really snappy and responsive. And like you can get into a battle with just a couple of dudes and be out of it in like you know, t- fifteen seconds or whatever, right? Like like everything even is, with is, all is the very, RPG mechanics. Yes, everything is really responsive. Like like when you knock a dude down. Down, and you follow up with another dude it'll be like a critical hit on the ground and it looks good and it feels good right and and uh even when you're beat you don't move characters around in battle they kind of like move on their own it reminds me of like grandia or something mm. right so like position but positioning does matter so it, it might it might serve you to kind of like wait or really kind of choose who you're going to attack to set up like an area of effect attack or or like uh you know, an assist where other guys might join in, right? So you're kind of like following this flow of battle. But when enemies come and attack, there is like a like kind of like Mario and Luigi uh, RPGs. Uh, you can do like timed Pop, parries time, yeah. to reduce damage, yeah. uh, uh, incoming like defense, and like you know when you have an enemy that's like fast and that might attack you multiple times, you might have to press it a couple of times. And I even noticed. Too, it was really cool. I did it where I attacked a dude that was like between me and an, an there was another like bad guy in between me and him, and uh, and and as I was running, this dude tried to like take a swipe at me, and I parried that, and I kept running to the dude I was going to attack. Hmm. So it feels like like even though this seems like a bastardized version of a JRPG, um, like. Uh, like they hacked a JRPG into Yakuza. Like there's a lot of actually really cool ideas that make it just feel like a nice, fast flowing, like new turn-based JRPG battle system. Like this seems like a really good JRPG battle system. I don't know if it's going to be all that balanced. Like if it's going to like maintain a certain level of challenge that forces you to use like certain abilities. I feel like Yakuza has always struggled with any sort of like real balance. It's always gone from like too easy to frustrating with no satisfying in between. Mm -hmm. But I think they have a good chance of maybe achieving some sort of satisfying balance or satisfying uh, combat if, if they if they get that balance right. Maybe I'm mis- maybe I'm misremembering, but isn't is, is I'm, it, I'm about to do a, a seven by the way from, the, from the baby. Would people. this be baby? It's so great. Would this be the first Yakuza game where you're roaming around the world with other? Like, well, no, 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 no. I mean, so like official party members, yeah, I guess you could say. Uh, but you you very often like have you know like Date or, or you. A, like, someone who's with you, who when you get into a combat encounter will, like, join in and you could do, like, heat moves and stuff with. I mean, that's very common in Yakuza, but never, like, officially, like, party members. So I'm running up to this, I don't know, job office to literally change my job classes. And you could, you could, see, you could see some of the other ones that are available. You could turn anyone into these job classes, except the girl. I, she only has, like, I guess, chauvinistic job roles. I don't know. I mean, whatever. But it, it's... <laughs> so I'm kind of mm. turning them back into their base classes. I think this dude's a bum, and he he uses like pigeons in battle. It's like really cool. Um, you didn't it, use the summon. You said you were gonna. Use. Well, it's 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 right after I, I do here. I get into a fight and I do the summon. I, I I remember that I have it. So it was funny turning that like big buff burly like dude into a like break dancer and stuff because that seemed really cool. But this new take on Yakuza is like seriously really refreshing, and I can't wait to like learn more about this new character and learn more about this world. It's like. It's it's like so familiar, but at the same time so refreshing. Like this, I feel like is what Yakuza's needed for a while. Just sort of a a step back and a a new fresh Approach. take. And, and I'm I'm so one of the things I'm most excited about is is how this game is gonna kind of make me nostalgic for old school <laughs> RPGs, which you, is hard to believe. So I, I'm gonna do the summon here in a second. So, do the summon. So 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 here. So look how how quickly I got in and out of that fight, and I'm already back on the map. No loading. Very snappy. That was a JRPG battle. That's pretty. And I'm good. Already, I mean, it was easy, but you know, the first time I played this demo, because uh, I couldn't figure out how to save. I don't know if you could save. If someone was recording footage, I kind of started over from the beginning. I, I was going to shops. I was buying new gear. I was equipping gear. Like I mean, it's a fucking. RPG. Okay, here's where I'm going to do it. I don't know if you noticed earlier, but like when you go into battle, their outfits can change based on like the type of enemy you're fighting. Did you see that guy that was like wearing a, a bathing suit and like holding like a little float or whatever? He was also like covered in like oil or something. I don't know what's going on with that dude, but he changed when I got into the quote unquote random encounter, which is cool because it, it, it's, it, it sort of gives you that vibe of, 
of and look at this guy he has an umbrella and a shield right like mm-hmm. they're they're trying it's a garbage pan they're, they're trying to go for this idea of like really unique looking and feeling like enemy types that you would get while you're playing a jrpg so so this dude transformed into this like uh, uh, you know this this bathing suit dude it was just kind of fucking hilarious um i promise this is the battle it's not. Nah. Oh, that I'm, is what, such a what liar. I, what I'm showing you is how snappy liar. and res- responsive just, this is. Just I'm keep, leveling up. I'm getting in and out of battles. Just keep rolling the footage even if we, if we switch So ask, ask me questions, man. Ask me questions. Well, I, you, you, you got to see it. It's fucking know, great. Just leave oh, the footage rolling. Oh, oh, well, I'll, I'll say this. Yeah, we, we could just leave the footage rolling. Mm-hmm. I'll say this. Like, um... Uh, it se- like there seems to be a lot of voice work in this game, and, and I say that because there is sort of this, there's sort of like a lower budget Yakuza thing sometimes where not a lot of stuff is voiced outside of like the main story, but then Yakuza 6 comes out, right? And everything is voiced, right? Judgment comes out, not everything's voiced, but we do have the full a huge English, chunk of English localization voiced. here. It seems like most of the scenes, like even in the sub-stories, are voiced. Like everything, when I was talking to the babies and stuff, Oh, here we go. Hmm. Talk right. to the babies and stuff. All right, it's we're, finally we're happening. Voice. So I'm pretty glad. Watch Call Chris the babies. Beat. This one's really good. It, it's even better when you can hear it because the, this dude's crying. But uh, it, I can't wait to fucking play this because you're right. It does seem kookier. Oh my god, what is happening? It does seem kookier uh, than the previous Yakuza games. I don't know what's happening, but he's getting upset like he's a bad baby. This reminds me of Henry, actually, <laughs> and, and my wife trying to. <laughs> Come on, Henry! <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's so like he's screaming. <laughs> I think this is like a big debuff summon. <laughs> this is wild. It's crazy. All right, we we, so, yeah. we do need to move on, but this looks fucking dope. <laughs> yeah, like, I, can't, I can't I can't wait to play this fucking game. All right, well maybe maybe Yakuza Seven will be the first one I yeah. ever play. I don't know. It looks it looks like a wild it's deviation for, for so the series. it's it's a good place to start because it's a new character, new city, new storyline. Although in the most recent uh, story trailer at the very end, he does have an encounter with uh, Kiryu Kazuma. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, cool. All right, so here's the deal, guys. We have we've been going we're going a little long. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have questions we need to answer tonight. So mm-hmm. we have three news topics, but l- we're, let's just kind of like casually blow through them very Bam. quickly. All right. So casually and quickly. Casually and quickly. I feel like those are somewhat at odds. No. Campo Santo game. Oh, so. I did put this one. Wait, why is it in trouble? Okay, so this is actually kind of scary and interesting. So we know that Valve bought Campo Santo. Yes. Uh, I'd say a couple of years ago at this point. Uh, yeah. Pretty, pretty shortly a- after. So shortly t- after they like announced right this. After. Two yeah. years they announced in the Valley of the Gods or Valley of the Gods, which is a really cool trailer. These were the guys that made Firewatch as their debut game. Yep. This looked really good and exciting. It's then, a, this was a Game Awards announcement. Correct. Then they got two years ago. Yeah, yeah it, almost two years. Uh, Actually, uh, the um, the things that they got bought ball by Valve shortly after, which mm-hmm. is like exciting for them, right? Because I'm sure they got like a huge paycheck, right? But you've heard a lot of stories about the shit that's going on at Valve, and oh, you mean how they <laughs> buy things up, people that make games, then they don't make games after that, yeah, yep. or, or like like really famous like game designers or go to work at Valve. You're like, oh, what is he gonna do? And then he's he there for nothing. a few years. You hear nothing, and then he leaves Valve. Yep. So. So the reason this was I thought this was kind of scary is like PC Gamer recently put out an article saying, "Hey, uh, people are somewhat worried about Valley of the Gods," and they had like three leads from Campo Santo, including Jake Rock and uh, the people who fucking made Firewatch, right? Mm-hmm. All remove it from their Twitter bio. They all huh. had it on their Twitter bio. Wait, they had. In Valley of the Gods? Valley. Developer yeah. of Valley of the Gods. And now it's gone. Now it's all gone. Interesting. Same all, time. All, all of them have removed that from their Twitter bios. Also, uh, just yesterday or two days ago, Chris Remo was on a podcast. who's literally ha- not been on a podcast since Idle Thumbs ended after Valve bought them mm-hmm. because a lot of the people that formed K- Kempo Santo did a podcast called Idle Thumbs, which I loved. Um, he was on a podcast talking about his time at Valve. He's He was doing UI work on Dota Underworlds. Huh. Yeah. So. Interesting. It doesn't sound good. For Valley of the Gods, to be nope. totally honest, which is sad. Yeah, I mean, and the only other thing I can think of is maybe they're they're preparing for like some kind of big re-reveal where maybe it's not called Valley of the Gods anymore or something. But but Mountain of the 
uh, dogs. Maybe they're repositioning it or changing it completely. Who the hell Probably. knows? Maybe but. it's called Half Life VR. I mean, no. the good thing is, the good thing is, we are coming up on the Game Awards. Maybe we'll do some kind of re-reveal there. I don't fucking know, but if hope so, I don't know. But yeah, in other Valve-related news, mm. we finally got our our Half Life announcement. Yay, new Half Life game. We're That's all... what everyone wanted. There's a new Half Life game. There's Yay. a new Half Life. Oh my god, it's happening! Yeah, it's it's not happening. Woo! Thanks, Gabe. Valve has announced a fl- their what they are calling their flagship VR title <coughs> called <No! coughs> Half Life Alex, which is a terrible name, by the way. Mm. With a Y. Yeah. Um. This sucks. <laughs> this sucks. It's a thousand dollar VR headset. You know. Yeah, thousand well, dollar. You don't have to have the Valve Index to play this. I do think you? you do. Are you fucking kidding me? That's why it's their. F- are you fucking kidding me? I mean, you have to have. I don't you, know. You, you do can, not need a Valve Index to play this. Okay. Game. Okay, but you do need a PSVR. Uh, but, I mean, a PC, PSVR. A PC VR headset, you, which so all of them are pretty like fucking HTC expensive. Like HTC Vive, an Oculus, or a Valve Index. Yeah, you're not going to be able to play this on like PS4 or with VR, PSVR. Or, or, or anything maybe like that. not even like a low end VR headset. We're supposed to get the full reveal on Thursday. Um, but but this, there, there's actually some details out that released just before the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't have them in front of me because, and I don't, honestly, I don't know how accurate these. But like, it's being reported that like you play as Alex, obviously, and mm-hmm. like the instead of you're not given a gun, apparently, mm. instead of a gun, you're you have like this. I forget what, like what it's called, but you're gonna use the the controllers mm-hmm. that they're whatever their special controllers are called mm-hmm. to like. Y- like you magnetize things, like you pull things to you from a distance okay. and stuff, and that you use that to solve like plat- platforming puzzles. And stuff. Like, sure, these are the so, very early rumblings of what's ha- of what this is going to be about. So this is like a small side project, and it's probably, also right? it's a, also supposedly a prequel. Wait, Brad, hold on, hold on. How can you have a side project if you don't have a main project? That, well, that's what I'm talking about. You can't have Half Life be gone for this long and then come back with this thing. I mean, I mean, and that just sucks, I mean, man. Brad, you know, you know why you can? What? Because that's what they're fucking doing. I mean, well, uh, literally, yes. So, but, but what I'm saying is that that's such a slap in the face to Half Life fans, right? Especially when you know how bad I mean, people yeah. are jonesing for. I mean, like first of all, playing this thing is very cost prohibitive. What I, what I don't get, what blows my mind is that, like, th- they know where they left off with episode two, right? Uh-huh. They left off with, like, one of the biggest cliffhangers ever. Well, Not only is it a huge cliffhanger, but it's, like, related to, like, Alex, which is, a, like, a huge character in that series that, like, people love. Yeah. And they're just leaving it hanging there. And so they bring, they're, they're making this new game as a, as a quote-unquote side project or whatever with her name in the title but they're making it a prequel which kind of implies that it like has no connection at all to the huge cliffhanger they left at the end probably so too it's like why 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 would you do any of this it's so it's so fucking weird so um it, so a month ago uh-huh uh the guys the guy who does the the valve news network youtube channel mm-hmm. posted a video talking about half-life vr and specifically called out that it was about Alex and gave a bunch of details that are sounding pretty accurate. So it sounds like he me. leaked it and people didn't realize it was actually leaked <coughs> I mean, it what was... What else did he say? Well, he said this is a 12 to 15 hour game. Mm-hmm. Oh, fuck. Um, that there will be weapons, like handguns, submachine guns, things like that. Um, and uh, that in place of the gravity gun... The what you were describing with the gloves, yeah. mm-hmm. that's they're called gravity gloves, and they function just like that. GG. Gotcha. And, which is supposed to go hand in hand with the controller technology that goes with the headset. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, this is frustrating. It is very frustrating. Yes, and like you said, very cost prohibitive. But like I said, we're gonna know more about that probably next on the next show because we'll get the official full reveal, mm-hmm. I believe, on Thursday. Um, which I don't know. Does that correlate to like a Game Informer reveal or something? Valve only know. has yeah. like 300 employees. We're, we're, and, only, and they—that's not a lot for like a studio like Valve, um, that it, you know does as much as they do. I like, guess so. And and you know, but the way they do it, like from what I and again, I was just listening to this podcast with Chris Remo, who was kind of illuminating as far as how things work at Valve. Like people just kind of like float around and just sort of work on whatever they want. Mm-hmm. You know, like, oh, I'm going to go see what these guys are doing and help them out. And they have like, they have like three structure. dudes that are like obsessed with doing Half-Life 3, but they're off working in their own like side office. Just like nobody's helping. I us mean, with it, this. it's 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 not surprised that they can't like get a 
major major project to fuck together you know yeah. i mean look at how we've heard about left for dead 3 for you know for half sure. a decade at least and nothing's come of it it's frustrating yeah for sure all right well that's that's really all the news we have this week we'll revisit this um next week probably when we have more information to, to give about it because like i said full reveal coming on thursday nolan mm-hmm. are you ready to read off some questions always let's do this Alrighty, so first off, I'll say we have no new patrons. No this week. new patrons, guys. We got to get okay. our next goal one seventy five. Yeah. We're gonna do a themed month on the stream. We'll pick a year and we'll, we will we will illuminate your lives with information and and streams of games that you probably never knew existed. We're gonna have a four player flash chat. I mean flashback. Flashback. Anyways, first question this week from patron from Nexus. All right, Nexus. What's an example of a time you played or watched something you couldn't believe wasn't censored in some form? <laughs> My family once watched the Adam Sandler flick Zohan in theaters Uh-oh. in a predominantly you mean Muslim don't, don't mess country. With the Zohan? Yeah, I think so. Wait, they watched it in a predominantly Muslim country? Yes. Show was a satire on the Israeli Palestine issue. Ooh. Yeah. Something yeah, they that, couldn't believe I've, was censored in some form. I feel like hmm. that probably would have been pretty awkward. Um,. I mean, stuff like that definitely happens all the, uh, quite often where I'm like, oh, shit, that's that's where this is going? Or like, oh, that's... I mean, little... I've seen a lot of comedies like really push push the boundaries yeah. and, of stuff, of things that you wouldn't expect them to actually go and show you that you would expect to happen off camera or something. Mm-hmm. And they show you the <laughs> fucking, like, Zack and Miri make a porno make for, comes to mind with the whole... In particular scene? Or... That one particular scene. Which one? I don't remember. It's been a while since The I've one seen where it. they're having, like, anal sex or something, and then you, like... They're, they're filming a porno uh-huh. and they're filming the anal sex scene and like he pulls out and then she takes like a huge dump but the, uh, but, he, but he's like underneath her like filming like the like the yeah. bumper cam shot or whatever yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. like whoo i did not think that What's was a gonna... bumper cam <laughs> well nick you are watching a movie about people making it's a, a porno it's a professional term used in the what profession in the pornography industry mm. i'm just kidding that's actually probably not an official term that is used i, I think it's just funny so How i use do you it know this nick because i used to work in porn okay i bet you used to no, I, that's totally not true i'm making that up you look like the kind of guy that worked in porn oh <laughs> not like as a porn star but like behind the camera I'll take that as I don't know, I don't know how I'll take that. All right, what what else? Is there anything uh I can't I off the top of my head I can't really think of anything too crazy. Uh uh-huh. hereditary. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, that kind of happens off cam. I mean, the thing is that, that that particular scene you're thinking of like depicts just something that I haven't seen this movie, so I don't know what y'all are talking uh, about. Uh there's there's the death yeah, of yeah, a Yeah, but but like not only that, they go back to like show the result. Yeah. And there's, they stay on it for a. <laughs> there's a death of a. We'll, we'll just say there's a death of a child in okay. that movie, and uh, it happens off camera. Mm-hmm. But then they go back. Like the setup is, it happens, and then the person who witnessed it happen just kind of like goes into denial and like drives home and like pretends like it never happened. Mm. And then the next morning they flash back to the, the happening. The the body of the yeah. child, let's just say, and focus on it, and it's like horribly, horribly disturbing. Uh, and the camera just holds on it for like way too long, thirty way seconds or long. something. Gotcha. I mean, that whole movie is about making you just feel incredibly uncomfortable, which is part of what makes it really like great. But whew, man, they push they push some boundaries there. Interesting. Um, I think that's a pretty good one. Pretty good answer. If I think of anything else, I'll, okay. I'll shout it out. All right, let's move on. Next question from Thorax. Can you tell us any behind-the-scenes info or stories about the Patreon homeless video you produced some years? The Patreon homeless video? The Patreon homeless video. I mean, the, the video where we were, we were living in the future and we were homeless because we didn't have enough... We didn't... Uh, yeah, I can tell... Like- I- I can tell you we almost got in trouble with the law. Yeah, <laughs> that is true. <laughs> we did not. I a mean, very nice police officer was just like, hey, you can't stand there. And we we're like, okay. And then well, she left. Well, we were originally trying to film a oh, shot. Oh, when we were by the train tracks? Yeah, we were originally yeah. trying to yeah. film a shot of us walking down the train tracks. And yeah. like a police like a officer. cop came up, yeah. Apparently, the, the, the like gravel to either side of the train tracks is considered... Like federal property. Yeah, you're, you're, not, not, allowed, you're not supposed to be. You're not, you're not, to not supposed to be there. And yeah. she asked us for our like. What did she say? She asked us if we had like a, a film. Oh, permit. If we had a permit, and we were like, totally. <laughs> yeah, like totally, we do. Yeah, it's in the car. Like, um, yes, we do. Thanks for asking. <laughs> oh, do uh, I have it here? No, 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 no. no. Uh, uh, 
uh, I remember we found like a dead mouse or a dead rat, and some of the peak guys yeah. were very like, "Oh, we can't have that on camera." Yeah, we did get squeamish about that. Yeah, but that be. area where we were sitting in that storm drain mm-hmm. where we were like recording oh, the hobo yeah, podcast, yeah, yeah, there yeah, was totally yeah. a dead rat. Dude, holy shit, I forgot about and that. And then, um, okay, so uh, the other thing too was when we 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 shot all of that pretty much sequentially. Yeah, we did. We shot it all in order. For some stupid fucking reason. And then uh, that was my fault. I was kind of leading the charge. Crispy was being crispy. I was, yeah. I mean, like, as as writer director, <laughs> <laughs> these were my calls to make. Um, and then when we were shooting the Carlos stuff, that was at the end of the day. And, like, we were all just kind of freaking out about losing light. Yeah. yeah. It's getting dark out. It was, get, it, it was getting dark. It definitely yeah. was. It was heated. And uh, yeah. it wasn't that heated. But that that road was probably like five miles. Like, so it's supposed to look like we're walking up from a ditch Mm -hmm. to the road where Mm -hmm. Carlos is. And it doesn't look like that at all because those two roads are like five miles apart. Yeah. Yeah. And that was just like a little access road for the back of like a Lowe's. A a Lowe's. Yeah. 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 And then, uh, yeah. And Chris Davis did the license plate on Carlos's car. (laughs) As a Which was nice. Did. Oh, oh, wasn't there a thing about the money? Yeah. Like we yeah. printed up a bunch of bills with Carlos's face on we it for did. him to like throw out the sunroof, but we only printed them on one side. One side, yeah. yeah. They, weren't, we were they weren't double sided. Like, we were just kind of like, oh, this is dumb, <laughs> like because they're like flittering around in the wind, and you're gonna see that they're bullshit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but that's a fact. But you know what? That, I think it turned out beautiful. I think it did too. It it it, it like. It the video, looked, the video probably needs to. Be, maybe we could re-edit that video to like include like our actual it was, current yeah, <laughs> Patreon. It goals. Honestly, I, I preferred the the second Project M video. <laughs> the second Project M video was really good too. I uh, we should talk about whether we want to do one for the new one. That it wasn't perfect, but it turned out a lot like I the thought. ADR was <laughs> amazing. Let me tell you. <laughs> Wait, the what ADR? It's all right, Nick. Don't worry about it. Oh, he's. It. Oh, I thought you were industry people. Nick. <laughs> I thought you were in the know. We're talking about porn. What? <laughs> I don't. No, I don't think uh, there's too much ADR in porn. Automated dialogue replacement. Oh, uh, right, 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 right. Perfect. I this do, plan is back on. I'm definitely not in the industry. <laughs> the, uh, all right. The anyway, dumb stuff. Yeah. All right, let's move on. We got more questions. Uh, next question from Mr. Green Toast. With the announcement of a new Half-Life game being a quote flagship. VR game. I wanted to ask what series has a sequel or spin, I guess spin off, yeah. uh, that you felt was odd or strange for either being on a new platform or overall design change? Ooh. Yakuza 7. <laughs> that, there Yakuza we go. 7. That might fit. Um, Resident Evil 7. Resident Evil 7. Uh, what what I mean, no, I mean, Resident there. Evil 7 just felt like a, like a soft reboot of the entire series. Uh, I don't think that was. That was particularly. What about Beyond Good and Evil? <laughs> oh, like this you know, Beyond Good and Evil Two yes. being whatever the fuck that yeah. is. That's a that's a pretty good answer. Um, also, yeah, so, uh, so, sorry, I was being too hard on that when it was announced. No, you're not. Thanks for contributing to the conversation, Brad. <laughs> uh, um, what what about Undead Nightmare? Yeah, I feel like that's a pretty uh, unexpected take on like considering that's the only dlc like story dlc f- or expansion for red dead redemption i definitely did not expect them to to do a zombie game as oh that. oh uh, uh, uh uh gears of war pop oh did that oh, ever come out yeah what happened with that, that wasn't a serious answer how about gears of war XCOM? <laughs> that's a thing too that everyone keeps forgetting yeah wait isn't that isn't pop and the XCOM thing the same thing no. is it like no, no they're no, different it's, games it's they're, gears of war every, everyone wars. thinks that you're not yeah. the only one who thinks that yeah it's like it's like uh one of those things where you just here's hi- history you. is just forgetting you wait history is remembering the wrong thing did they come out and it's becoming oh, common knowledge Mandela effect. Mandela effect. no yeah yeah yeah, yeah exactly. Mandela effect i thought it was weird that the 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 Overall design change in the new Pokemon doesn't have all the Pokemon in it. Oh, shut oh, up, Dola. <laughs> shut up, Dola. Get out of here. What, why does this game not have a thousand Pokemon? Final Fantasy 13 2 and Final Fantasy Lightning Returns. Mm-hmm. Both, first of all, what the fuck? I mean, I love Lightning Returns, you know me, but like, 
that was unexpected. I mean, I know why they had to do it logistically because they needed to recoup all that fucking money. But like, come on, that was a bizarre experiment that kind of drove Final Fantasy to the ground. <laughs> next, next question. Uh, do I have to read it? Oh, yeah. is it bad? Mm. Is it a Carlos question? Yes. Oh God. <sighs> I'll read it if you want. What's a good non-obtuse RPG of any subgenre? And he tweeted this too. In which I can be a goth ass necromancer. Should I just drop Dragon's Dogma? That shit is way more complex than I thought it would be. Uh, Menus out of every orifice. Should I try Kingdoms of Amalur instead? Was that a whole stream of consciousness? Yes. Yes, there was no punctuation. Uh, yes, Carlos, play Kingdoms of Amalur. Totes, you're going to love it. Uh, uh, Diablo 3. You can be a really dope necromancer in Diablo 3. Goth as fuck. Oh my god, we have a lot of questions. What about week. Vampire the Masquerade, bro? He's, He's played that. All right, yeah, let's next question. <laughs> uh, fuzzy Turd. Uh, there's been many times where I've had to pee. Oh. Cool. All right, next question from Lent. I'm just kidding. Uh, there's also been many times where I've had to pee with nowhere to pee. So there's been many times where I've had to make do by peeing in a bottle, sink, out the window, and in my own mouth? What the Okay. That's not true. Who, who, who's who? joking? Laugh out loud, please. Uh, anyway, what's the most unconventional place you've had to pee or poo? Uh, Ooh, this is a good question. Where have I had to pee? Yeah, but any answer that's like outside doesn't count because that's well, correct. The, that's the original. There's definitely there's definitely been a time where I've, I was like camping in college. It was super fucking cold, and we were like in a tent, but our tent was like at the near like the edge of like a clearing, yeah. and so like five feet away from our tent was bushes. So I literally just like unzipped the back of the tent and just like whoop, just like right outside the tent. Oh, <laughs> I I almost at like four in the morning, and then just went back to sleep. I almost peed on my neighbor one time. That's a weird. Situation. So, to so be like, in. I woke up in the morning and I had to go to work, and I went still to work. Get, getting weirder. Yeah, yeah, no, no. So I, I, you know, I woke up and oh. like most people, I pee in the morning. Sure. When I wake up and I'm doing my morning constitutional. Yes. You know, uh, but my roommate was in the bathroom and I was like knocking on the door, like, "Hey, man, I gotta like, I have to pee really bad and I have to leave soon." Can can you hurry this up? And he's like, "Oh, go go pee off my balcony," because his room had a had a had like a little porch all to itself. Right? Sure. So I was like, he was kind of joking, but I was like, ah, I, I got to pee. So I, I went out and there was this big wall of like bamboo between the two houses and his porch is right up against that. So I was just like was peeing into the bamboo bushes mm-hmm. and everything. And while I was more peeing, like bamboo. And while I was peeing, I like, I noticed that my neighbor was like walking around in his backyard and I was like, oh, like he, I think at as close as he got, like within five or six feet of, wow. did he know? I don't know. I never even met the guy. Uh, I but pe- you've peed on him. I <laughs> Maybe. Pe- I peed in a kitchen sink. Ooh, that's a good answer. Yeah. Brad's being awfully quiet. Uh, you have to. Yeah, I've peed in a kitchen sink plenty of times. Now the question was, who have you peed on, Brad? The kitchen sink. <laughs> Did you turn on the garbage disposal? I've never had to pee in a kitchen sink. Before. Well, there was yeah, no I other refuse. options. No, it was raining outside. No, like, I, I refuse you're, you're, you're to pee short. in like sinks or you're, bathtubs no. or anything. Like I've never Wait, peed in the bathtubs. Like no. like in the shower. You, I've never peed in the shower. No. Oh, what? Really? Every day. <laughs> <laughs> it it saves you the trouble of having to no. like. Man. That's like a that's no. like a that's like a life hack that you need to take advantage of. Man. No, you guys save are just the, showering in save toilets. Save the environment. You guys are just showering in toilets. Now. Save the environment. Yeah. No. Have you ever peed in an ocean? Sure. Dude, that is one thing I will say. The weirdest thing is You're when you in fish's it, homes. Yeah, fish fucking it. Yeah, I don't if, like fish. If, if you Fuck ever them. if you ever go like scuba or snorkeling or something. Like, you just kind of have to pee. Like, you're out in the fucking middle of the ocean for, like, eight hours. When you got to pee, it's just... And it's the weirdest thing where I'm, like, just swimming around, and I'm like, I know I have to pee, and I'm, and I'm like, okay, pee. And it's like, my body's like, mm, oh no, oh I'm not going to pee right now. Wait, were you're you wearing, swimming in the water. Were wa- you wearing a wetsuit? Wearing a wetsuit. So the pee is just, like, circulating around yes! your wetsuit So when you pee hours. in a wetsuit, yeah. it doesn't... It can't, like, leave. <laughs> Yeah. And so it just like kind of seeps around, and like, there's just like bubble you're just, of. You're just pee. wearing a big sack of your own pee. 
<laughs> but there's literally nothing. And so, like, after a while, I, like, end up unzipping it. And I try to, like, flush out some of the liquid to we, get some fresh seawater in we there. We finally got, the, we finally, we, we spent a lot of time on this question, but we finally got to the answer. The wetsuit is the best the answer. The wetsuit. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's move on. Next question. From Landon. Uh, so I just finished The Outer Wilds, the game by Mobius, not Outer Worlds, mm-hmm. and I absolutely loved it. Great game. It just might be my game of the year. Mm-hmm. Do you guys mind giving me uh, mind giving your thoughts on the game? I never heard you guys go in depth on your conversation about it, or maybe you could even do a spoiler cast. So we've definitely talked about we spent- Outer Wilds quite a bit. Yeah. I, um, on previous podcasts. Maybe, I don't remember the exact episode. Maybe somebody can go back real quick while we're recording and fi- go through our f- figure out which episode we talked about the Outer Worlds. Uh, I, th- I know we talked about it for at least two episodes. Oh um, yeah, because because I you were you were you were the first one or Brad? You or Brad were like some of the first people to play it. Oh well, Brad played it first. I picked it up like a, a week or two later, and I played a decent chunk of it. I finished it. Yeah, you finished it. I didn't finish I'm it. I'm the only one here who's finished. I it, believe I think. that's accurate. And that game is one. That's one of those games where I feel like everyone it's on this really couch. Cool. Not only is this is that like up everybody's alley, like on this couch, like everyone needs to finish I, it. So, I'm pretty so sure it'd be. It, it became a scenario like, where I was enjoying it. It was having fun with it, but I kind of just like I kind of got lost. I wasn't exactly sure what I should be doing, and it's kind of one of those things where it's like it's like Groundhog's Day, you know. Obviously, you keep just doing the same shit over and over, and when you don't have the guidance of wait, what am I supposed to be doing right now? Uh... I, I kind of just was like, hey, there's this other game over here that's very straightforward. I'm going to play that. It's one of those it, games that it's hard to go back to if you started it. Yeah, then, I yeah. can imagine. It, it 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 almost feels like No Man's Sky by way of Kerbal Space Program. Hmm. Sure. Like, just because of, like, the real physics like, yeah. almost puzzly nature of moving around that solar system. Mm-hmm. Which, I because cause they're, you know, they're basing it off of, like, actual physics of like how a ship uh, of how a, a vessel would have to move in space around planets in order to like yeah function and it's crazy but yeah. it's a hell of a lot of fun it's a great game also uh just for the record it looks like chris davis found it six episode 619 of the show is the first time we talked about the game post-release you know, we probably so, talked about it on 620 619 and 620 check those out um all right probably next, a next good question idea. uh all right let's move on next question Oops, I tabbed out. Um, oh, good. From Ash. Uh, my question stems from replaying Uncharted 2 last week. Mm. Once I started that game, I couldn't put it down until I earned the Platinum Trophy. Nice. What is the most perfectly paced game you've played? Red Dead Redemption 2. Uh, yeah, that's probably not entirely true. Call that perfect. Uh, yeah, Un- Uncharted 2 is up there. For Uncharted me. 2 is yeah. definitely really good. Portal. Portal's really good, yeah. Portal's uh, pretty good. Like uh, Resident Evil 4 or 5, like a uh, like good Shinji Mikami game. I would probably say like Cooking Mama 3 Shop and Shop. Pretty good paced game. Shut up. <laughs> Have you played Cooking Mama 3 Shop and Shop? I haven't. Have you? Yes. No, you haven't. Yes, it's right there. <laughs> I made him look over there. Uh, <laughs> you're such a dick, no, no, There is a Cooking Mama no, game up there. <laughs> I don't know which one. I think it's probably the first Cooking Mama. Um, you know, I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna fucking say it. No, this is probably don't not, say it. Don't you're say gonna it. be not, wrong. maybe not ever. But don't I'm just, say it. Nick. Fucking days gone is perfectly paced. Hmm. Is so it? good. So you fucking good. Morello. So fucking good. Mm. Yes. That's it's true. it's weird. You go for these like big sprawling open world games where you kind of do kind of a, a lot of me and no i mean as a as your example well, well, yeah a perfectly he's paced, paced game. would generally be a game where you don't really have control over the pace the game sets the pace yeah. for you oh no fuck that okay breath of the wild okay that's like a nick answer yeah. but i mean it's not a nick answer because crispy said my, i'm sitting right because here because i said it <laughs> and it's a good answer and, and i just mean the fact that like the game takes the first hour to really kind of like introduce you to all the systems and then literally the pace of the game is completely up to you but at no point if you decide to like take your time does the game feel like it's slow and you're not making progress true oh. true i could i would it's a good answer that's a really good answer, Crispy. You know what? Fuck also, you, fuck you, Dark Souls, the original Dark Souls. Ah! Although some might say that the, that the spikes in difficulty might hinder the pacing in that game, so that could be I, a tough. I, one I would to... say uh, if you don't do like collecting all the flags and feathers and shit, Assassin's mm-hmm. Creed Two, I think had pretty good pacing to it. Yeah, Assassin's Creed Two is a good one. It's a good one. Easy. But you know what? I feel like no. 
You know what? I'm this is I'm actually gonna build off of uh who who has this? Ash Ash Ash's uh, answer. I honestly, I think The Last of Us. I didn't want to say it just because I mean it's another Naughty Dog game, and obviously yeah. we all know The Last of Us is but the I real th- answer. But I think, but yes, it is very well. I think Naughty Dog. Should somebody say it. I mean, but like Naughty Dog has found like the secret sauce in terms of like they're pretty good at it story like pacing a game like games that don't really overstay their welcome they tell a really good story they keep you going at a really good clip and you never feel like you want to stop like yeah, yeah. i'm gonna go i'm gonna go with the last of us or uncharted 2 they're both all right we great. got we got more games next question <laughs> games uh more questions next uh question from tot camp tot camp tot camp, tot camp. Uh, i just recently bought a third party playstation controller and i'm loving it uh i feel like it's totally worth the extra cost compared to the first party controller are there any accessories that you guys have bought for console or pc that are totally worth buying well first of all fuck you for not telling us which one you bought because apparently it's super good why wouldn't any of us share this information Todd? don't hoard it for yourself how dare you um back in the day i bought a logitech ps2 controller Mm -hmm. and i had one of those the, the thing was it was wireless yep and that was the, the wireless controllers just weren't a thing back then. And so it had the adapter you plugged in. And it was it, life changing. Dude, it was fucking oh. amazing. And then one day I accidentally dropped it and it hit the ground. It, the Die. the rumble would never turn off. That's it a, fucking uh, just like would just constantly. It rumbled into oblivion. In yes. That, in that same vein, though, like the Wave Bird from GameCube. Remember that? Wave Bird was that, super That really good. changed my life. Yeah. Yeah. For the better. Those are both great answers. Brad, you They're the same answer. Yeah, basically. Oh, I like the Wave Bird too. Uh, I don't Bird. think they made a Wave Bird too. Although I didn't have Rumble, but it's the first first party wireless controller. True, that it is true. Became the standard. That is that. true. Uh, I don't like accessories. Knock off. Um, yeah, Xbox I try to avoid accessories as much oh, wait, as possible. Oh wait, what about what about your little uh, your your bedtime switch arm? Uh, dude, that is pretty legit. You know what? That if, I mean. if that counts as an answer. I'll 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 wait. I did he go. say it had to be first party? No, he did not say it had to be first well, party. Yeah, yeah. I mean, dude, I remember back in the day there were so many like fucking accessories for consoles. Like, oh, this little thing, and you you attach it to the side and add some extra fans onto oh, your console gotta, that yeah. like blow air. Yeah. But they have like a fan that rotates the, like thirty intercooler. times a minute. <laughs> yeah, shit like that. That honestly did nothing. In the same vein, in the same vein as the uh, the switch arm, which I think is great. But I also got like a first party. Uh, stand that like looks it looks like a little tablet and then it like unfolds into this like stand that holds the switch up so you can take the controllers off and like i can sit it on my desk and play uh play the switch uh which got inspected at an airport and they like pulled it out and they were like what is this and i was like it's a bomb i had to go through (laughs) the like i was like i was like it's a stand for my game my 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 nintendo switch and he's like he looks at it and like turns his head he's like Show me. Cost? He's like, "What? You got a switchblade?" No, he, but he like he like literally had no idea what I was talking it's about. Are my video games? I know. Sir. If, 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 Please don't hurt me. He literally looked at me and was like, "Show me." So I was like, "Okay," and I had to like unfold. So, this thing. I like grips and stuff for my so, handhelds. King Carry is a good point. The Game Boy magnifier and light. That was fucking legit back in the day, That's dude. The remember, story. remember the one and that then had, what, like, like the speakers, the fold-out speakers, yeah, yeah and the fucking light. <laughs> dude, I, I remember. Oh, the, and there the was Game a, Genie, Game Genie. There was that yeah. one accessory that was literally just like a, a like a little coiled wire with a light on it. So no. you just stuck it in. It was like bloop, yeah. and just tiny little light. The best thing about the Game Boy Game Genie was that it had that little compartment with the tiny little book that uh. had the codes <laughs> in it, and the book was only like this big, but it was like that thick. So it was a cube of paper. I remember going through airports. There was one time when we were. I want to say we were traveling like PAX East or something, and David had all of the the mic stands. Do that happen? Yeah, they, bag. Thought, they thought they were TNT. Yeah, no, <laughs> like, like dynamite sticks. We literally had to. We we literally like. All right, who wants to take the hit with the carry and the mic stands yeah. and, the, and the bags? Because they're gonna to every fucking. They're gonna yeah. inspect whoever whoever packs them in their bag. Yeah, who's got pipe bombs in their bags? What's going on here? I mean, they do look suspicious. Yeah. Next all question. All right, moving on. Next question. I gotta scroll because I lost the place. Uh, from Zero Skies, how do you feel about actors used as models for game characters? I wonder what game he's talking about. Uh, do you think it will take away from unique character designs and identities as game development moves forward with these practices? Uh, I, I think everyone does actors these days. I mean, here's the thing. All right. What would you say, Brad? 
everyone's doing actors yeah. these days, pretty much. I mean, I mean, unless it's like sort of an iconic character that that's existed for a long time. If you're if, if it's a new IP that's coming out, like a you know a triple A game or whatever. It's almost always going to be some sort of actor's face, right? And it's always varying. It's not, I mean, not every time, but it's always varying degrees, too. Because, like, look at, uh, <laughs> so we have, this week we had Star Wars, which mm-hmm. is uh, Monaghan. Uh, I can't remember his first. Is it Carl Monaghan? Sure. Remember. Why not? Um, Carl Monaghan. <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, I don't remember how to say his name. Hey, Damn Carl. It. Carl Montague. I'm going to regret saying that. Uh, so, varying degrees of success. I think he was, I think he's all right, but I think a lot of the technical Ow. issues of that game were kind of holding it back. Like, it's, it almost looks jarring because uh-huh. the character model I don't think is that great. Yeah. And then you have Norman Reedus in Death Stranding, which I think looks fantastic. Like, you, you know, it's, you, they've done a really great job with the mocap and stuff. It, it's, it's, you know, sure. It's not distracting. Uh, and then Days Gone had Sam Witwer as mm-hmm. well, and they did a great job in that game. You know Fuck what game also Brett. had Sam Witwer? Oh, wait. I can't even talk bad about Sam Witwer. No, like, you know what game talk- also had Sam Witwer, Nick? Huh. So, Star Wars The Force Unleashed. There you yeah. go. Yeah, of course. No, um, that guy. He's a, yeah, he's a that guy. In wait, it's video the same game. guy? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Starkiller? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Sam Witwer. He, know, he was also Doomsday in Smallville. He was Doomsday in Smallville, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cameron Monaghan. Thank you, Prince of the Universe. Cameron Montague. Um I Carl think Sam Montague. I think Sam Whitwer did a great job in Days Gone. Can't really speak for That's that's Nick's fake name. <laughs> like whenever that that's his Rusty Shackleford. <laughs> that no, that's his uh Pierre uh fuck, what was his name? Fuck. Uh what uh Okay, we got to move Hold on. Hold on. I don't no. Know. I don't know. No. How did none of you follow the I, news? I, I don't uh, Pierre Delecto. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's his Pierre Delecto. Carl Montague. Carl Montague. <laughs> I just want to say, how many questions do we have this week? Because I read like five or six of them, I think. We have three more questions. Okay. okay. Patron. Rapid fire. Uh, all right. Next question from the Drunk Merchant. People joke about the Switch being a port machine but personally i love it recently the eShop showed call of juarez gunslingers release date for next month it's a great game that frankly i thought was going to get lost uh to time much like scott pilgrim versus the world game are there any games that you were worried might be lost to time if they aren't brought to current gen a couple of va- examples being condemned Two, which was brought up in the revival cast and wonderful 101 uh, to find scott lost. pilgrim versus the world to find mm-hmm. lost to time i mean Gunslingers on it's, Steam. Uh, well, I, mean. I think it's one of those situations where it, think of a game that's older that hasn't been ported to a, a more modern console in some way, shape, or we form. Did, we did reference Condemned on uh, yeah on the po- or Condemned Two specifically on the podcast this week with talking about Fear because they never ported it to PC, so it's it's just hanging out there on the 360 and the PS3, which I don't I, even have. I feel like anymore. I feel like games lost to time are, are ones that are tied to old consoles with a very specific kind of tech that doesn't really exist anymore. I think of various like touch screen only like dual screen yes. games from like the the ds like the zelda there's games, gonna be a lot like of like zelda ds games yeah. that doesn't really translate that well to like a modern like capacitive touch screen so they kind of just don't really do that stuff not anymore without, not without stylus the based stuff least. or like i honestly i think the real reason we haven't had the metroid prime trilogy and i i, I have a feeling we might never have it properly is because the touch control or because the, of the, the, the Wii remote the Wii remote like yeah. the, the, the the joy cons well, i think there's it's with, not the, they they only they they can't do the same like ir sensor they only do the fucking um motion aiming but and why, that would why, not why can work you, for metro but why can you not translate that to like a, a playstation i mean obviously i'm going to come to playstation but why can't you translate that to like one of the vr on pc they have definitely motion controls well, that are I easily mean, why couldn't you just translate it to a dual analog control scheme mm, that's a little more difficult it, it's i mean different. i'm not I mean, saying you can't you definitely can it's just going to be different it works on vr because you're, you're you're in it and you're in a 3d space right yeah, yeah. But, but like uh like so you were kind of like moving like a cursor, like yeah. Metroid Prime. You can't really do that, like at least not well with the Joy Cons. So, I mean, you can with like like VR and like uh, and, and more yeah, modern games. Yeah, of course games. you can. But I'm talking about like I got you, Metroid I got Prime you. Trilogy. I got you. Trilogy. What about Final Fantasy Crisis Core? It's gonna get lost the time. Thankfully, was that the mobile phone game? No, that no, was on the PSP. That was the PSP game uh, where you play as Zach. Also, uh, what was the mobile? No. There's been plenty. They're of bringing also. back to. The Crystal Chronicles, yeah. which which used the the connectivity with the with the uh, Game Boy advances, yeah. and they're they're porting that to Switch. 
I don't know how they're going to do that, but I mean that's something that you wouldn't think that would have been able to come back, mm-hmm. but it is. But I mean, similar to what he said, <clears> like <throat> like the Wonderful One Hundred One is a good example of yeah, the, like the Wii U was so unique because parts of the game you played on the fucking gamepad. You know, that's something that's going to be difficult to port to anything else unless you. I mean, don't get me wrong, you could easily just have it maybe pop up a smaller screen yeah, or something. But that sucks. And yeah, it would be awkward, but I mean, like, it's why, better than Brad, nothing. it sucks, but I mean, okay, just keep your Wii U forever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you probably. And, I, mean, until I, it I don't think Wonderful One Hundred and One is going to get ported. It would be you nice if it was. I feel like I need to add Wonderful One Hundred and One as a nomination for the Revival Club, just so I can have an excuse Dude, I need to, to play it. it. So you can uh, have an excuse. I know. All right, let's move on. The excuse is it's a great game. Uh, next question from Konish: There are Christmas movies and Christmas music every season. Why aren't Christmas games a thing? Can you think of any good franchises that could work with some seasonal DLC? I will say. In 2012, approximately, uh, is that when you and Jack lived together? Probably. Uh, sure. I drove from Houston to Brad's house in South Austin on Christmas Eve, and I sat in Brad's house, house by myself, and I played a shit ton of XBLA Christmas games <laughs> for like four hours. <laughs> hey, uh, they exist. Hey, that's, Chris, that's dedication. Chris Davis, wouldn't you say The Division is a Christmas game? Oh, no, yeah. I'm serious. Is The Division like... The whole the whole inciting incident of The Division is Black Friday, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's like all snowy and everything. I mean, it's as much like, like Christmas is kind of like woven into the, the setting of of that game like almost almost as much as but, something and like I feel Die like, Hard. But I feel like that's like that's kind of like as good as it gets sometimes. Like I, t- uh, Ultimate Inferno in chat mentions Dead Rising 4. Yeah, I was going to say Dead Rising. Just turned out to be yeah. kind of a, a, a don't, you know, don't a, play that. a there's, dud. There was a costume quest Christmas DLC, I think. Mm. Uh, some games get Christmas You know what would be great? Yeah, Christmas lot, Nights. You know what would be great if they did some Christmas DLC for Days Gone and they put little Christmas hats on all the Zambies. Okay. Did you see that face he just made? Well, what? I, I felt it. The same face I <laughs> you felt it. <laughs> they should do like they should do Christmas DLC for like everything. Dark, Dark Souls three, Ooh. not not Christmas Death Stranding. Sure. Oh my God! It makes too much sense. Wait, you know there's a. Never mind. Just... Oh my God! Santa Claus is in Death Stranding. Santa Claus is Death. Stranding. He's a BT. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> That's how he gets. Uh, he right. does deliver packages across yes. the world. You're Santa. <gasps> He connects us all with Christmas cheer. <laughs> yep. This will give you a sleigh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Next question. Uh, from uh, Don Dolan. They should. How extensive are the online elements of Death Stranding? If someone were to play it offline, how would their uh, how would that affect their gameplay experience? Here, here, here's, here's the short answer to that question. If you play it offline, which is totally possible, I feel like it's going to extend the amount of time it takes you to do anything. Because instead of having other people help you build roads and stuff, you're going to have to do all of it yourself. Um, I almost feel like they should have made it so that it determines, it, it knows that you're playing offline and lowers the the requirement for the number of that materials. That would be a bad idea. Because, you know, if you have to do everything by yourself, having to collect like 10,000 chiral crystals for one stretch of road, plus metal and ceramics and all this shit to make one, one section of road, like, it's just going to take a lot longer. And you, you may end up just saying, fuck it, I'm just going to hoof it across rough terrain mm-hmm. way more often than someone who was playing it Are online. Are those the conditions that like reviewers were playing the game under? I'm wondering. Uh, maybe. I, 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 I don't think so. I think they were probably playing on a network with people, but the number of people that were playing it was probably a lot smaller. Right. Oh, so, that just means they probably interacted with each other a lot more. Yeah, true. Uh, all right, let's move on to some questions from our supporters on Twitch. First question this week from Villasaurus. When did you realize you were old? Today. Bonus points for not mentioning jobs, marriage, or children. Second question, if you guys have time, how do you feel about the age range of your viewers? I'm 22, and I'm always surprised to hear that some of the viewers the same age are the same age or younger than me. Um, I will say this. Well, I, wait, I, first of all, who says we're old? I'm not old. Yeah. I realized <laughs> today I, I realized today that I'm old Take because my back, my lower back has been in like a lot of pain for the past 24 hours and i did nothing that would <laughs> that should yeah. cause that i've been like walking around like doing stretches and like trying to like it's been awful my, mine Stress. is my knee for like a year now my left knee just clicks oh no, crispy it it's clicks. not a year it's gonna be the rest of your life no i know i know i know <laughs> my, my right knee away. clicks every time i walk upstairs yeah, not when i'm just walking too. if i'm just walking whatever <laughs> 
stairs clicks every step. The other thing, like the other things that make me realize that I'm old are like, like memes that I missed, you know? You know, like like when people are like revive, like oh, remember this meme from two years ago? And I'm like, I fucking miss that, you know. Yeah. Or like, I, I don't know, like, I don't, like I feel like I try to keep up with the youth culture, you know. But but like Chris when you start, like when woke. I start seeing memes that are like, this is what we grew up with, and it's like Minecraft. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> or like when I when I like engage in discussions about things like star wars it's like oh yeah well i, th- I think it's one of those yeah. things when i think about it i'm like we're, oh. we're part of different generations i'm like oh yeah 1998 that was like 10 years ago right i i think whenever you start oh, to yeah. we, whenever you start to internally refer yeah. to it as keeping up with youth culture i think that's an yeah, indicator that's right there it. too that's it. Yeah. uh i hope that answers the question yeah <laughs> yeah all right. Um, and in regards to the age of our viewers, I think a lot of them are in their early. I mean, er, like I would say between twenty and late late thirties. I know up, there's some on either. We range. picked up a lot of younger viewers because we were very early, jumping into like the streaming, uh, thing, explosion. I guess, mm-hmm. um, which is a very like I don't want to say millennial thing mm-hmm. to like you know like as someone. Who Do you is, mean how four player podcast was the big bang? Of, of video sure, game streaming, we'll, we'll say that. But I'll, I'll say as someone, as like someone who, theory. as someone who identifies no, as like as as someone, as someone who identifies as uh, Careful. like someone who is older, old enough to like see youth culture as something separate, mm-hmm. right? You're fucking old. As shit. <laughs> sure, I'm someone who is old. As you sh- get too excited about backsplashes <laughs> to not be old. <laughs> <laughs> backsplashes yeah yeah i could just imagine you and robin having a conversation about we did what tile pattern you want for your oh backsplash my, we had our so on our anniversary last friday you know what we did we spent a portion of the day at the home depot buying <laughs> there you <laughs> go buying what lighting oh nick it was great oh, nick. <laughs> did you buy lamps no we bought track lighting we did buy track lighting. <laughs> <Jesus> <laughs> you son of a bitch uh no but uh, seriously like as someone who like it's surprisingly because i guess i'm old we're, we're we are older than like our average our average like viewer or listener like i don't get the appeal of watching people stream mm-hmm. i don't get it um oh I, no I, I i've never been into it i stream and i'm gl- i'm thankful that people like watching a stream but i don't ever watch other people stream yeah it's just something I don't get, so I don't know. All right, let's move on. That made me realize I was old. Uh, next question from Chai. What's the most cringeworthy thing you've done or seen a person do when trying to get a boyfriend or girlfriend? Oh, no. I'm talking about oh. Bobby Hill, little candy man levels of cringe, I, if possible. Uh, I veto. seen an otaku get denied at dinner after a girl said she builds Gundam models. He offered to come over and help, and she said, mm, no thanks. It was quite a dinner after that. Not so bad. Yeah. Oh man, I feel like no one should have a thousand answers for this because he watches cringe videos I, on the regular. Have you seen that one video? It's like a guy and a girl like on a rooftop and they're talking and they're like laughing and having a good time and he like goes in for a kiss and she just like whoop just like slides out and his face he's just like oh yes I and have you see to. her like laughing in the background. Oh. It's so fucking good. I, I I don't think I've ever witnessed anything anything cringeworthy oh, like in, in regards to like a girlfriend front. boyfriend. Hmm. Like, like in person, I've never seen anything super cringeworthy. Yeah, I, I think all human connection is cringeworthy. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> well, I've always been smooth as fuck, so it's nothing I've done. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Next yeah. question. Uh, I is can't that think it? anything. Is uh, that the last one? No, we got more questions. Oh, my God. I feel like we need to put, like, an upward we cap on the number no, no, of questions. No, no, no. One more question, and then the rest carry over to next week. Where are all these people? Uh, they are our community, Brad. But uh, there's they... more questions than there are people in chat. <laughs> no, there's 110 people in chat right now. Yeah. And we've answered 130 questions. <laughs> Blobly asks, now that we're approaching the final months of 2019, what do you guys think are some of the best games to come out this decade? Oh. And if possible, what single game do you think defined the decade in the industry? Uh, that the is a tough question. Us. Maybe we can wait that on is that. A, oh, yeah, shut because... the fuck up, Brad. That is a tough question. And maybe we should do something. Well, maybe we should have we should. A, segment. Like, a segment or something. Maybe next week or towards the the, the last one of the months of this of or this a top year. ten of the day. I think. Yeah. I think the you're year. right. We should definitely consider this, and I'm sure we will over the next year. We no, will, no, 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 no. We'll think about. Hold on. No, hold on. Stop. 
Here, here's what no, I, I want just us mean to do. Over the next year. Here, yeah. Here's what I want us to do. No, not we're going to talk year. about this. Not a next lot. year. Over the next year. I'm not saying we're going to wait until next year. Well, well next next year. I'm is saying a year from the now. new decade. What what I think we should do is over the next month. Shut up. <laughs> each come up with our own top ten of this decade. Well, obviously Let's say top five. Why, why not? Talk? I can think of ten games in the past oh, ten. ten years I've liked. Oh, One game a year. It's your top ten from every year. We'll, we'll rank them. We have those. Well, no, I know. Well, well, let's let's just unofficially let's not do a post about it. Let's just get together. We'll submit them, tally them. One gets ten points. Nine gets whatever. You know what I'm saying? And then next week on the podcast or the week after, or whatever, sometime in December, we'll just do it. I I will say though, like four if, players if, top ten of. The twenty aughts. If you want a twenty tens, if you want a quick and dirty answer for like games that have defined the decade, um, I think I think Dark Souls is a good yeah, is a, a good, good candidate because it has like Inspired completely so changed much. how we talk about like action games. That's a sure. fact. Sure, Fortnite. The beautiful. Fuck th- you. Oh god, I was I was literally about to say the beautiful thing Minecraft. about Minecraft. The beautiful thing about our show is that we can we can do this list. We can curate this list. We can talk about it in depth, the and none of us will mention Fortnite. And then this fucker. The, um, pro- the problem with this list is is we've uh, on record we have top tens going ten years ago. Well, you know what, Brad? So like my top ten is gonna be, you know, games from the top three of each of those lists, right? Yeah. Dark Souls was. Was uh, 2011. So yeah, that was this thing. Yeah. We will talk about it. I think to, I think we can come up with a cool segment for the show. Yes, we'll talk about it. What's wrong with doing? Let's that? be an adult, Brad. Segment. Let's we stop ha- being an old fart. We need to we need to wrap this show up. So let's let's if we have any extra questions, we'll put them off until next week. Uh, yeah, we, we do. We do have more questions. We appreciate. Yeah. Holy shit, guys! <laughs> First of all, it used to be hard to get people to ask us questions at all. I know. What and the now, fuck? Where'd y'all come from? And now are, we're we, gonna, are we giving them money? Why are they doing this? They're giving us money. <laughs> <laughs> Brad, do you know how this works? <laughs> no, I don't understand it at all. <laughs> they're giving us money, and we're letting them ask us questions. But now oh, they're overloading us. Wait, are you really saying you're you get this now? Like it's just clicking, just not clicking. Anyways, if you if you want to ask us questions on a future show. You can support us at Patreon for at any tier, one dollar or higher, and you can ask us whatever the fuck you want on, on on any of our upcoming shows. Also, if you subscribe to us on Twitch, time to wrap up the show. Yep. With, with a the four, segment with, I'm with, not ready for. With the four player minute, we do our hype, sweat, thank you, and fuck you of the week. Brad, are you ready to go? Sure. Take it away. I have four sweats. Oh shit. Oh, no. Um, my first sweat is for a game that came out. I think. Today? Yesterday? I don't know. Oh, Shinmu? No. Oh. Kingdom Under Fire 2 finally came out. What? Kingdom Under Fire 2. What? Which, really? Which, which was like announced, I don't know, like when we started this podcast or Sequel something. Sequel to the original Xbox title, Kingdom <laughs> Under Fire? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. This thing's been kicking around in a lot of forms for a long time, but it's never officially come out, not here in the West at least. Some version of it came out in like Korea at some point. And mm. I, I don't know. I like Kingdom Under Fire and Crusaders and Heroes. I mean, uh, this, uh, I don't know. But yeah, I'm not so sure about that. The Steam reviews aren't so hot. Not so sure. Uh, also, for in December, Watam is finally coming oh, out. Oh, finally. Wow. Jesus Christ, I forgot about Watam. Uh, the reason it's a sweat for me is because I love Katamari. Yeah. And therefore, I love uh Kate Takahashi, right? Yes. And Nobi Boy is kind of this cool. Have you, have you played any of him? No. It's weird. I've seen a fair amount of it. So so the reason it's my sweat is because I'm a little worried that Watam's gonna be a little closer to like Nobi Nobi Boy than something like Katamari, no, as in a, a fully developed idea in game, you know, developed yes. from that idea. And I don't know. I just want Kate Takahashi to do Another the next, what's the next Katamari man like this thing seems quirky but it doesn't seem you know well like I thought it was gonna be thing. I thought it was gonna be Donut County but it was not what I wanted yeah. it to be unfortunately yeah. um my third sweat is for the end of the year I'm worried that everyone aside from Nolan here seems like the, the, one of the few people I've convinced to play Superland. And hey, I beat Superland. I'm worried that, and and I finally got around to to finishing it up. Or I'm working on it, um, but I'm getting pretty far. 
I'm worried that people are going to get to this end of the end of the year having never played this jam. Well, it, it's forty percent off on Steam right now. I don't think that much longer. It is a fantastic fucking buy game. this game, play this game. It is truly one of the best off, games. Forty percent off, huh? Yeah, truly one of the best games to come out this year. I will say this: I was hoping to do. Um, I usually try and do this sometime in December. I want to do like a, you know, like a on a weekend, do like a day long stream or something where I just kind of like grab a bunch of stuff that I hadn't had a chance to try yet and yes. just like honestly, play a bunch Superland of stuff. is not super long uh especially it's, if you don't try well, I, if you don't try and like 100 percent the game if you're yeah. just kind of going through the story unlocking new abilities and, and using those abilities to get to new areas you can probably knock that game out in like it's 10 hours it's 1999 hours. oh well, i'm like 30 hours into it, it. it's, it's I not mean, i don't i don't know what my steam hours it doesn't say like it's marked down on steam it's maybe the sale 19, ended did it just end i don't know it just says it just ended right as brad said that that's about i looked it up like you know, before we started viewer questions, which I mean, it was like 45 minutes ago. So maybe it just ran out. Jesus. Motherfuck. I'm still I gonna... literally just searched it. Mm-hmm. Well, um, well, I have 14 hours on record, Brad, and I'm, I beat the game. Okay. Well, I don't know why you're going so slow. Well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, maybe maybe I haven't played that much. But uh, there is a lot of optional stuff in that game. I, I also but have like I said, 83% of the achievements. This is the fucking cross code of this year, I think. And I think people are... Much like cross code, people are just not get gonna, slipped through the fingers. Not gonna play it, which is crazy. <clears throat> All right. My yeah. final sweat is for Dragon Age in general, right? I mean Dragon Age? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Dragon Age, you know, Bioware is not what they used to be. You know, Anthem was dog shit, right? And, and they're so, rebooting so the they're rebooting it apparently. Mass Effect was a train wreck as well. And the last thing we heard about yeah, Dragon Age was that it was being rebooted to become something more like Anthem. Yeah, but um, Anthem is being rebooted, which that that's to a be bad more idea. like Dragon Age. Oh my god! So like, yeah, I worry. How about my sweaters for Bioware in general? They really should have just let Anthem go oh, yeah. because I don't think there's anything they can do to it to make people care, and it's, they're just gonna burn a lot of money and time. I mean, I don't know. It could be another Final Fantasy fourteen situation. No, 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 no. All right, I don't, we don't need to get into that. I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. All right, Nolan. What up? Four player minute. Oh, really? Yep. Uh, okay, I guess I can do that. I mean, what is the four can, player minute, bro? I can refer to yeah. Crispy first. If you no, I'm good. I already have my list written out. Go for it. Uh, my hype uh, is for more of the Mandalorian. Uh, yeah. Holy shit, that show is so fucking good. That's pretty good. Like, I'm I am the, like shocked at how much I'm enjoying. I'm kind of bummed the episodes are as short. I, th- I thought they were going to be like hour long episodes. Like, they're like forty minutes. Shut so up, the second Nick. episode is only twenty nine minutes. I don't Nick, recall that. Shut up. I watched it like Fuck yesterday. You, so, Nick, someone shut someone tell me how many minutes the, the second episode of Mandalorian. I, I has. watched it less than I think it's like thirty something. I watched it two nights ago. Thirty one. Episode it is episode one. I think it's was, like thirty thirty one minutes. There you go. That's more damn. than twenty eight. Yeah, but that oh. includes that includes <laughs> so, um Credits. The first episode was 37 or 38 minutes. Because it was that. a premiere, What Nick? are we talking about? <laughs> I don't know. Cool. What are we talking is it about? Cool? Is it cool? Yes. If you haven't seen it's it, really it is cool. very I'll good. It. I'll watch it. I'll watch it. Um, my sweat uh, goes to Dragon's Dogma. Uh, that is our current... Um, Re, revival, uh, revival club. club thank you i was like replay what is it called revival club um and i really want to fucking play it because i love dragon's dogma but i'm worried because i don't have any time oh, uh, but i really want to fucking play it uh, and everyone in discord has been talking about it and i keep every day i go in there and i'm like what's it's everyone a talking very about active it now? revival club channel yes uh, i'm i'm kind of excited uh my thank you uh is going to go to... I, I have it written down, but I can't remember why I wrote it down. So I wrote Death Stranding, and I want to say it was probably to the other people in the Death Stranding who I'm like kind of who have been kind of in, in their shit's been incorporated into my game. Um, I really wish that was more obvious than it is, like how it works. Uh, but especially because like the zip line mechanic is something that it, it is very specific. They only work if they are within 300 meters of each other. So if someone puts a zip line and it's 301 meters away from one of mine, they can't interact with each other. Yeah. But I've been noticing some that are kind of positioned really well. And I'm like, did that person just put it there on accident or on purpose? I really wish there was an easier way to kind of yeah. work together with other people. But there's not. Like, no one, no, no one here is a, a strand of mine. No one on my friends list is a connection. And I think they probably do that on purpose. Yeah. Uh, but... For the people who have been giving me likes and using my stuff and all that stuff, thank you. Uh, and then my fuck you goes to myself 
for Disco Elysium. I still have yet to yeah, even purchase that. that game. Fuck you, Nolan. Uh, <laughs> I played I, some of that today. I really want to. Yeah. Um, it's one of those things where, like, I know the game is going to be amazing when I eventually get around to playing it. When is that going to be? I don't know. Crispy. Huh? How are you doing on Disco Elysium? Pretty good. Really? Yeah. Have you been going balls deep on that game? Yeah, it's been a couple days since I've played, but I'm... I don't know. I think I'm somewhere like 12 or 14 hours or something nice. into it. And yeah, it just keeps unraveling. Beautiful. That's pretty cool. Awesome. It's a cool game. It's a cool game. It, I'm. It it's going to be on my list. It is the first game I'm going to be jumping to as soon as I finish Death Stranding and Star Wars. Yeah. Luckily, star, those are the. I think those for me are the last two game, like big, bulky games that I know I need to just finish. And then it's just like clean up for the rest of the year. Just like go back and play all the stuff that I kind of let slip by. And Disco Elysium is my number one priority after that. Yeah. All right. Uh, what's your four player minute, Crispy? Um, my hype is for more of Jedi Fallen Order. Mm-hmm. Specifically, I, I want to get more towards like the thrust of it all. Where the story starts know? to really take, like ho- take hold. Thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, really, really digging it so far. Um, I'm also very hyped to finish Disco Elysium. I feel like I'm probably rounding up. Uh, I think I'm coming up on the halfway mark. Okay. Just based on what I've read. Gotcha. What day are you on? I'm on day two. Okay. Um, and still a fucking fantastic game. I really hope more people play that. Uh, my fuck you for the week goes to me. It's more of like a. I'm excited, but I'm also disappointed. Um, <laughs> Fuck you, Chris. Yeah, I uh, I got back into Magic the Gathering. No, <laughs> I've been playing wow. Arena, but see, like the thing is, like I I got back into Arena, and then I started like looking at deck meta <laughs> shit, and then I realized I had a whole bunch of wild cards on my account that I'd never redeemed for anything, and I was actually able to use them to make like a decent deck, and then I started like winning, and then I was like, oh, that's it. This is it. Here I go. My life is Here over Here I now. go again. I'm, I'm pretty sure I've told you this before, uh, Crispy, but you need a nerd life coach. I kind of <laughs> do. I mean, I need a life coach in general. <laughs> Specifically a nerd life coach. Uh, uh, it's, <coughs> it's really cool. And the current, the current set, which is called Throne of Eldraine, is interesting. But one of the things I like about it is that like one of the creature types that features heavily is knights. So that's kind of fun. Been like building all these night decks. White mana? Uh white and red and black. black. And That's white, gross. red, and black. And yeah, it's it's this really is all cool. foreign to me. I don't know what it yeah, is. Yeah, it's pretty dope. Um and my thank you. No one picked up Pokemon, huh? My thank you no. to the week goes to Pokemon. Baby Yoda. Ooh. Baby fucking for, Yoda for, for being the one thing it's not a baby Yoda. for being the one thing that can unite the Star Wars fan base. <laughs> I, I thought there the was the one thing. I thought there was a that Yoda. we're all into. I thought there was a Yoda in Yaddle. Episode One. Yeah. No, no, no. I thought there was. Yeah. yeah. There in is. Episode One, there's yeah. a there's a female Yoda called Yaddle. Y- Yaddle. They even reference her in Fallen Order. Dude, oh do y'all remember when? The Phantom Menace first released, mm-hmm. and they had the practical effect puppet for Yoda, mm-hmm. and it was like, it was like horrifying. horrifying. It was dog shit. And then it somehow they, looks older than yeah. Older Yoda. And then they went, and then it they looks so bad. And then they went back and they CG'd him in mm-hmm. when they released him on Blu-ray. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. Anyways, all right. My four-player minute starts now. I have four hypes. Uh, my first hype is for this Friday. Uh, Rob and I are going to see Knives Out. Um, <sighs> Can I come? If there's still tickets left. <laughs> uh, Wait, this Friday. Like, oh, uh, it releases on. I thought it didn't, thought it didn't come out till Thanksgiving. It doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't. No, but well, they're doing next week or next like Monday or Tuesday. Gotcha. So, but they're doing early screenings. Um. So and somehow we managed to get tickets damn, for that. I so want to see that. We're going on Friday, so I'm very excited for that. It's getting pretty damn good mm-hmm. reviews, and it looks like a fun movie. Um. My second hype goes to Death Stranding. Um. Because I kind of know, uh, like now, I think right. I'm. I kind of have to pick one. This or Star Wars, and kind of laser focus on one until I finish it. I think. Because uh, going back and forth between two big games like this is kind of <laughs> is is stressful. Um, so I think Death Stranding is going to be it for me right now until I can put that 
Uh, put it back on the shelf. Understandable. Uh, my Man. third hype. I mean, I don't know. I could cave and like so keep jumping back and forth. We'll see. Uh, my third hype goes for our revival club this month. Like Nolan said, is Dragon's Dogma. Mm-hmm. I am planning on doing a stream on Thursday night uh, where I play Dragon's Dogma for the first time uh, on PC. I'm very, very excited. Like like Nolan said, it's a very, very active uh, channel in Discord. People are very excited about it, which is making me very excited about it. So I'm very much looking forward to finally giving that game a uh, a, a fair shake and and talking about it. We're, we'll of course record Nick, a podcast about it. When all we're done. of us have great stories from Dragon. I know, and I remember a lot of them vividly. You need to get your own great. Story. I know. I can't wait. I can't fucking wait. So, uh, and I'm trying. To, I want to be more punctual about doing the Revival Club podcast. We were a little late on the Fear one, but I'm going to try and do the Dragon's Dogma one towards the end of December. Uh, I don't think I'll finish the game by that time, but I'll have enough experience sure. with it to talk about it freely, and that, that should be a lot of fun. So, um, And my final hype goes for Project M, uh, December 14th, 2019, uh, Resident Evil 4. It's a game that we're all pretty excited to play. I think we all have a fair amount of love for that game one way or the other, um, and I think it's going to be a fun time. It's also going to be a very uh, unconventional Project M compared to what we've done, the kinds of games we've played for Project M before. It's a totally different type Mm -hmm. of experience so i think it's i'm excited to see how that plays out in that kind of setting it's going to be fun and i think there's gonna be a lot of shenanigans and 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 funny shit happening Mm -hmm. uh yeah should be pretty good yeah i'm excited so anyways if you want to know more about project them of course again like i said at the beginning of the show go to fourplayernetwork.com there is a post currently up there where you can check out the details we'll update that as we kind of start to figure flesh a lot of that out ourselves including charity details and all that good stuff um but with that i think that's our show guys thank you so much for listening thank you for watching thank you for all the questions holy shit that's a lot mm-hmm. we may have to start putting like an upward cap on the number of questions we can do each week two questions i was gonna say more like maybe 10 at the top oh, at 10 tops. questions um but we'll see that that well, i mean what we could do is we could just create a doc and just throw them into the doc as we get them yeah or request questions every other week or something yeah. you know what i mean and then just or them. you know what we could do is talk them. about this off the podcast that's also that's a possibility that's good, good so one. anyways of course guys four player uh four player network.com is the website you can find all of our web our podcasts and uh posts and everything there you can also join our free discord at discord.gg slash four player and of course if you're interested in supporting us financially we would love your support at patreon.com slash four player or you can subscribe to us on twitch either way it gives you access to our uh, exclusive channels and discord and all that good stuff so thank you so much for listening we will catch you guys next week good night